And here we are in Katowice. Welcome back. How do you feel? I feel amazing, Jason. Yeah. You know, everyone's asking me that. Uh, oh, back in Cato, your favorite place. I'm like, guys, it's fine. Like, coming here for an IEM, I have no problem with it whatsoever. It's a massive tournament. It's just when I'm here on top of that for 10 weeks in the year with just two other dudes or something, broadcasting Pro League when everyone else is away somewhere else, all the players, all the other talent, and I'm doing the same exact show every day. That's when it gets a little bit... That's when it kills you. Yeah, that's when it gets a little bit hard on the old brain. But <laughs> <laughs> outside of that, it's uh, fine. And Josh, it's cheers. Beautiful, thriving city. Prost. Welcome back. Thank you. Cheers. You can't cheers with water. That's, that's bad luck. That's bad luck. You say you, you cheers the man, not the drink. Okay. That's how we say it. So yeah, talk, uh, probably your, bad luck regardless then. Into your mic, Josh. Uh, my bad. I'll uh, talk You're to you a bit more. You're only a streamer, so I wouldn't expect you to know these things. Yeah, my, my at-home setup, you know, I'm an online or <laughs> podcaster, okay? I don't do well on, on land podcasts. How's it, how's it been streaming? Oh, you know, streaming. You got your ups and downs. The, <laughs> <laughs> the ups is the money and the downs is the, <laughs> the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder because there are so many times, especially over the break, I was like, you know what? I'm going to boot up a stream and I have like a whole like stream graphics set up. I have it all set up in like OBS. And every time I sit down, I'm like, tomorrow's the day or today's the day. It's just like, ugh. Yeah, there's, uh, I don't know, streaming. Like when you're a full time streamer, I think you need to put the time into doing all the crazy stuff with, you know, panels and thumbnails and not thumbnails, but like uh, having people create these boxes where your camera frame goes and then like how many subscribers yeah. you have popping up and all this stuff. And then you have the scene switcher stream deck thing. And then I'm just there. Like it's 2014 again. Just I was going like, to say, you don't have any of that shit. No, I don't do that. <laughs> See, I, it's just too much work and effort. I even bought the, the stream deck. I have a stream deck. I have Fuck it all off. like paneled up, set up. And uh, cause I was like, you know what? I'll probably co-stream a couple of qualifiers while I'm chilling at home, maybe like down the road later in the year. I still kind of want to do it. I just, working up the motivation to actually do it for the first time. I'm sure once I do it one time, I'll be like, that wasn't so bad. That was actually kind of cool. But I think like you'll be miserable. It'll be like, I'm never <laughs> doing this ever again. We just took 20 minutes to set up like this little thing yeah. for a microphone. In the end, you did something. It was just, you were just really stupid about it. Like it was something it really basic. Wait, 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 that you wait, it wasn't up. me. It was like we unplugged the USB and plugged it back in. That was it. But also, and you needed me to come in to tell you that. Like, you couldn't figure that out. I would have gotten there eventually. Jason, I was you're just, too old to be I a was streamer. Just, it was all plugged in. It was ready. You're too old, I Jason. was like, this should work. One, now that it's set up, you don't have to play with it again. And two, even if you did know how to needed to play with it again, you know how to now. Yeah, it's in the back of my mind. Exactly. Unplug and plug the USB. Exactly. <laughs> it fixes everything. Hey, man, I worked in IT. That's actually the fix. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, this is Chad's department, but Chad's feeling a little bit under, under the weather. weather. Yeah, he's a little ill. So we're a man down, but we got twice as good of a man here in Josh Nissan. We replaced an Australian with a Canadian. Yeah. A Canadian living in America. Just living in America. Also stays in the Commonwealth. Yeah, uh, so shit, you were saying like uh, when we were at rehearsal, it's been what, seven years? How, how long? I think the last like actual gig I did was probably seven years ago. And then I did uh, the CS Summit as when I was on Ghost. So that was probably 2019 uh, at the beginning of it. So that would be five years if you want to include that. It's been a while. Yeah. What's it been like? Just Valorant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, you know, yeah. <laughs> that game. <laughs> um, I don't know. Being a player is always fun. I think yeah. competition, there's nothing that really comes close to it. But then, you know, it's not about the age in terms of being capable as a player. Usually when people get older, it's just the motivation thing where it's like, oh, well, fuck, I've been doing this Shifting for 10 priorities. years. Yeah, yeah, I have to do this. I have to, you know, I want to eat healthier. I want to do the gym. I want to have, you know, a family. I have, I've been competing for 10 years and, you know, the fire, the hunger is dying out. But for me, I never really had the chance to really compete at the top because, you know, <laughs> things, so, <yeah. laughs> things happened. So for me, the hunger is still there. But now it's like, you know, I'm in my mid 30s and I'm playing with, people that are still teenagers or early 20s and then you know they don't know anything about life they don't know anything like 
every taste that we have in, in music, it's like, what are these new you artists have no, that like, are out? connecting <laughs> point to them? Nothing at all. connects me to them, and then it's so that makes it difficult. But then there's also you know the, all the red tape with management, and then it's like, oh well, I know that this player has not got it, but like we have to give them time, and then I have to talk to management, and they say like, oh well, the coach is supposed to work on this, and the coach is like, well, I've tried and this thing, and it's like, well, fuck. At the end of the day, it's like back in the day, you had a team in CS and then like if people were good you kept them and if they weren't it's like all right see ya like we yeah. go we go next and I just feel like there's so much of that uh, management interaction now where you just can't figure it out and it's, it's just holy shit it's just so much stress because if the team's doing well it's like oh this person or that person is doing their job but if the team's doing shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's your <laughs> what but um well, what was it? Because at the end of your stint in CS, or rather before the Valorant stint, you started playing some of those, like what, not Dreamhack opens, like you were trying to play something with Torqued, with uh, Torqued, Ghost. Torqued, Chaos, yeah. Yeah, Chaos. Yeah, I mean, we, we did a bunch but of things. But it just wasn't um, enough, kind of? I mean, it, it was that Chaos good. end was sad, too, the way yeah. that all went down. It was unlucky, but it was like everything was happening then. It was like um, Pro League left America, mm. and then like we were getting Flashpoint, but then COVID hit. Uh, playing in those tournaments were great uh, with Ghost and with Chaos and, and even Torqued, but the, I mean, we played DreamHack Opens. We qualified for a couple big events. We went ESL1 Belo Horizonte. We did um, IEM Stockholm we qualified for. We did like DreamHack Tours, Atlanta. It's like a, a mix of like smaller events that we got auto invited to because of our world ranking or we qualified to like some bigger ones. And that was good. It, it like scratched the itch. But the problem was I had to work with players that, um, you know, if they were good enough to go to majors, then they'd be like, well, you know, yeah. I can get a major right now, so bye. So, so it was like a delicate balance of like, I, I kind of got lucky a little bit with like, with Ghost, I think we just like punched way above, above our weight, and then with Chaos, again, like the, the first iteration of the roster was kind of shit. We were not doing well. <laughs> we got like placed last in DreamHack Atlanta, but then like the roster we ended up with with Zeppa, Leaf, uh, Vanity, you know, we had like Sick, Smuya, all these <laughs> Voltage, all these other people oh, in yeah, there. Smuya with you, <laughs> fucking hell. That was so, at Flashpoint, right? We yeah, we had him at Flashpoint. <laughs> yeah, and then. You know, like that roster, we were doing well. We were winning like MDL. We we won like every online event, especially during COVID. And, we, you know, we did pretty decently. I don't know. We went to Flashpoint, I guess. But, um, you know, even those guys were like, if you got, if you don't take this offer to go to Valorant, like we're just going to kick you then because you're an <laughs> idiot. And I'm like, okay, bye. So, I mean, Valorant coming out, COVID happening, all this stuff kind of accumulating into, into that was, yeah. What was it like being part of like the the North American scene at the time? Because I mean, I know I kind of I kind of coached later after sort of I guess the the dust kind of settled. Mm -hmm, yeah. But that had to be like a weird feeling when COVID hit and all these tournaments started pulling out of the states and stopped supporting Counter Strike in the states. And I know all the players in the states just felt like everything was kind of up in the air. Like no one knew what the fuck was happening. We all just saw everything kind of disappearing. Yeah. Well, we got this, some like weird circular cycle thing going on because. So when I left for Valorant, it was getting pretty dry. There was Flashpoint, there was MDL, uh, which was online, mm -hmm. and then you had your online qualifiers for whatever. Now, in Valorant, you play the qualifier at the start of the year. Last year, for example, we played up until May or June, and then after that, there was nothing. Yeah. Literally six months, this was the challenger circuit, there was nothing. And this year, the main partner league there's 10 to 12 matches. You play um, your own group, which is six teams, and then you play the opposite group. And those are like the two splits or something like that. And if you don't qualify for an international LAN, then that's it. Your year's over, basically. So you could play potentially like one match a month on average. 
And then I think <laughs> that, so, so the world champion was EG, and I think they just need to win like That tells you games. everything you need to know, <laughs> by the way. It tells you everything they, you need to know. They just need to win two games, I think, and then they make the, the main land because they get like points or something from last year. There's one person on the roster from last year's roster. Does so, the points stay with Jorgen? I, I guess so. I, Does I, anyone no, know? <laughs> I don't think anyone knows, but. I was talking with someone who's on like the org side of things, and he was telling me, um, like their team is just gearing up for basically September. Mm -hmm. Like they have a six month lead time until like the important matches occur. And I'm just like, what a fucking mental. Yeah. Well, but we know that, but, but why? <laughs> it's, it's end heavy, I don't well, know. And, like there was that Fragadelphia was trying to run a, a Valorant LAN and zero teams signed up to it. They just switched it to CS2 <laughs> like a couple days back. Counterpoint, um, yes, that did happen, but also I don't think like it was advertised that well, but I think it's like in the middle of either the qualifiers for challengers or like the first couple of weeks. Okay. So right now, nobody knows what their availability will be for it. Sure. I think that was a big thing about it. Okay. Yeah, um, I don't know the Valorant. But it is well. fun to shit on Valorant. So we could just say <laughs> it's because Valorant, the Valorant scene's shit. We could just say that. Yeah. What was I mean? Because like Valorant as a game has a lot of similarities, obviously, to, to Counter Strike, and in some ways it feels similar with obviously massive differences but more to overwatch <laughs> yeah but what, what was it like com like competing in the scene and like scrimming in the scene and being on teams was it like shades of counter-strike essentially it's it's a lot like counter-strike um there's the more i've played cs in the last six months kind of since you know shifting away from valorant it's kind of really made me realize that valorant is designed to be more about mechanics more about gunfights more about not so much no, like not tactics. Just a meme. <laughs> it's no, it. it <laughs> I mean, the meme is like the abilities don't kill, which they do, but it is about mechanics because they basically want to promote gunfights all the time. And I noticed that when I was playing CS more recently, because in CS you everyone's got smokes and flashes, um, you default way more, and then the bomb sites, like the layout of the maps, you just have way more positions to play. You can rat around a lot more. Um, and then I played the Sentinel role in Valorant, and you would just, like, a cypher, you'd put up, like, a tripwire or Kildra, you'd set up a turret. Well, what is the basis of the Sentinel role? It's, the Sentinel role is mainly passive info. Okay. So in, in Valorant, the meta was basically, if you as five people go and attack a site, and you dump all your abilities, half of which can travel through walls, so, like, an, a flashbang that you can't dodge because it goes through the wall or a stun or a fla um, whatever. So, one, you just dump everything onto the site, and two, the sites are very basic. There's, like, one box, usually a it's spammable, a lot of open space. You have a, a, an ability that clears out the area, so you send one ability here. If it scans and sees nobody, you know that they can only be in, like, this other spot, so you just go and hard clear it. There's like two hiding spots. So it's a lot of like these five on five like brawls and, and team fights. And as a defender, you can't really like push through and get early info like, oh my God, they're going A, yo, I've pushed B. And then you get a flank off because you hit the trip wire, they all turn around and, and you can't do anything. So the best you can do is contain, but then your teammates are in a four versus five retake, whatever. So in Counter-Strike, you instantly like push an area or it's like, oh, there's four enemies out mid on Mirage. I'm going to take a ramp. Oh, I'm going to push through. Oh, yeah, I've got them cut off. They're going to end B. And your team just like shifts over there. You can actually like flank B hulls or whatever. Yeah. You can't do that really in Valorant unless you're on specific agents that can bypass some, some of the passive utility. Traps, yeah. I think that's why it's like hard. I mean, first of all, as soon as you use the term team fight in there, that's all I need to know. <laughs> um, but another thing is that's why Counter-Strike, I feel, is the, I mean, it's not what I feel, it's the, the matter of fact, is it has longevity. It's been around for 20 plus years and people have been competing at it because in its core, it is rather simple, it's right? Simple. It's very simple, yeah. But uh, to, to master it and as you get better, it comes down to these details and the game gives you a lot of options to do things, right? I feel I, I, I said this plenty of times, you know, I think what makes Counter-Strike great is there's nothing in the game that no move, there's nothing that's not counterable. It's all about information, you know, get, knowing what your opponents are trying to do. If you know for a fact what they're doing, you can. there's always a setup to counter it, right? But even on top of all of that, there's still room for 
a crazy individual play, right? For someone to really transcend the game in that sense and have an incredible highlight moment where you're going to be like, what the hell happened? Which is also something that is cool to be able to pull off if you're a player who was capable of doing that. But it's also really cool for the viewers to see, right? That's why people... You know, for me, you know, why watch sports? Like, if you play the sport, it's like some guy can do something that you can't do. That's like, well, it's awesome. You appreciate the skill mm -hmm. and and everything that comes with it. And I feel that Counter Strike absolutely has that. Yeah. One of the things you pointed on was information. In Counter Strike, there's very few ways that you can actually get information. For example, like if you throw a Molotov at someone and they burn, oh, I know there's mm -hmm. someone there. Uh, if you spam someone, you throw a flashbang and they make a step or, or shoot because, you know, they shoot their op. It's like, oh, their opera's here. But most of the time to get info, you actually need to physically spot them. You need to, like, use your body as a resource and peek people. And I feel like in Valorant, since you have so much free information finding things, you have darts, you have dogs, you have birds that, you know, will tell you telepathically you that you spot them. Space. You got the, yeah. the space. <laughs> You've got turrets, alarm bots, like tripwires, cameras. <laughs> you, you, the you on. <laughs> so you've got like everything, right? So it's like imagine you're setting up this intricate, like fake, double fake thing in Counter Strike where you have people waiting and you're gonna last 15 seconds, take the bomb into A, and you're doing like all this like crazy fake stuff towards B with like 25 seconds left, and the, the enemy's biting on it really hard. But then in like they just throw out a bird as they're about to rotate out, right? They throw a bird outside A main as they're about to rotate B, and it's like, blinded! It's just like, oh shit, it's a big, like, they're trying to go B. Like, you know, so it's, it's harder to pull off, like, these intricate, heist, you know, sneaky, sure. whatever, beaky plays. So that's why it, it just ends up being these, like, five versus five brawls. It's, it's just forced into that kind of... Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a weird angle to it. Well, I've 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 watched some of your your streams. You're playing you play in FPL in NA. How's that? How's that going? <laughs> it's an experience. <laughs> uh, you know, what's, I'm, what's it like? Because you were someone who obviously did that, you know, back in the day <laughs> at a high level, and now you're back playing with the top level in FPL. That's got to be a fucking trip. Um, yeah, let's just say I'm 34 years old now, and uh, <laughs> I've experienced many things in life. I haven't quite experienced anything like this. And if people thought I was toxic back in the day, yeah. holy <laughs> shit, what are these guys called? <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, it's an experience. It is a trip. Um, it's nothing like the old days. I think people still reminisce about that money 10 mans for a reason yeah. because everyone tried hard. There's no, like, no trolling because you would just not get invited back. Uh, you no sucking because you just wouldn't get invited back, um, and people weren't really playing for stats. They were playing to win because they had skin in the game. They had money on the yeah, line. Ten bucks, fifteen, twenty yeah. bucks. And then even like early rank S, early FPL days when, and especially when they were, you know, facing ES, uh, ESA were fighting for where the pro is going to play. You had a lot of the top level talent playing in them, and all the people that weren't top level talent were trying to you know, get discovered, get known. Oh my God, so-and-so's in this game, I'm gonna try super hard, I'm gonna be super nice, blah, blah, blah. But now in FPL, it's just like, everyone is just sitting there, just like egoing each other. All the top level players are like, what the fuck? Like, I'm not playing that. So yeah. every every team that does starts to do well, their players play less and less FPL, right? You'll never find like a liquid player in there, you'll never find a complexity player in there, unless it's floppy just trolling the team sure. speak. <laughs> um, M80 sometimes like slacks or sometimes like Swish will play, wildcard sometimes JBA will play, sometimes like a couple players from Nouns or, you know, just these generally top four, five, six NA teams, you'll see like one or two players from the teams from stop time in to time, from yeah. time to time, like a couple games a week type of thing. And then the rest of it is just like all these ECL players. But, you know, they haven't really won anything. They haven't really qualified for any big got events. Got skills, but they're just fucking messes. They've got, like, they've got aim, but they don't really have work ethic. They don't, you know, have uh, an understanding of the game. They probably couldn't put into thoughts um, or sentences you know, oh, this is how I see the map. This is how we should play this situation. Oh, this is like a protocol we should install because when they do this, then we know that, you know, these are their options, so we should do this to counter it. Yeah. Like, I don't think they've thought that deeply about things. But then, like, there was such a big void 
when all the players left, like all the tier one and two scene left for Valorant and it created a gap. It's like yeah. all the people that are in FBL now, if Valorant never came out, they would still be in main type of thing. Sure. So th that, it's, ha it's that happened the, with, yeah. that happened with like when, when 1.6 switched to source and then yeah. like that was that same. And then all this, and then the, all the 1.6 players quit. It was like mm -hmm. all the top players become like the eternally main teams just got like <laughs> defaulted up, but like still, had that skills of like a main team and it was just like oh fuck you yeah. just lost a generation but i wonder what the reason is for that you know i culture. think that what culture yeah but i th but okay so but a little bit more specific i feel that potentially one of the reasons is that there's less lands and i mean just you know local lands kind of yeah. like fragadelphia i don't know if we talked about this on like one of the previous episodes or i talked about it somewhere else but it's like when we used to go to lands, even f for us in fucking Serbia, right? Like you could, you had a land in 1.6, like every month, month and a half that would have 16 teams. Maybe, okay, the bigger ones, 16, smaller ones, eight teams, you know, and you start playing, you suck. You don't know anything about anything. I didn't know that I had mouse Excel on, right? And I had to turn it <laughs> off like for the first two or three lands until some older guy just explained it to me, you know, but you go there and it's fucking fun. It's yeah, fun as yeah. a, a social thing, right? Like you go there with your team, there's other guys there, you're screaming at each other, right? Cussing each other out, the game's over, everyone's friends, you're talking CS, right? And it's it's fun. You know you're not going to win the tournament at start. You know you're not going to make it out of the groups probably, but you're just hoping for some little victory, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where, how you get the bug. That's the addicting part, right? And And it's because of that that you are going to try to get better right and play more serious and and play to improve and start watching demos and do this and do that so that that's where that, that's the part that's infectious so i wonder if now you know you have guys who will get to fucking almost a tier one i mean we had bimas in when when olaf retired who like was never at all i never played for a tier three team you know just played some fpl mixes and I, I don't know something like that never was to a land and he's in phase like playing with nico and cold you you know so it it's crazy like how far you can get with just sitting in in your room and like playing C yeah. cs and playing online and i think sure you have some guys like bimas like brocky who are committed to like madden to an extent who you know are doing that but are also committed to becoming better players and trying and and, and wanting to play the proper way and you have guys who are just let's say probably very mechanically skilled yeah but not super committed to you know playing team cs so i wonder if that's the reason why you have guys who you know just don't ha have no idea the feel of like playing proper team counter-strike and just playing to beat another team and not playing for yourself individually to have done well in a game well it's it's weird because like that's i guess that goes to like the culture thing that you were talking about where it's like you know if you if you have that kind of pride in your game where you're always kind of trying you sort of learn some of those skills before you even get onto a team or, or tier one right like i guess that's that's the question is how do you fix it? Are you trying to fix it? Are you like me personally? Like, are, when you, when <laughs> I'm you... done trying to fix that shit. I, I don't years. Know. I got ostracized for trying to fix that. Everyone's just like, eh, dude, it's just a game. Just have fun. It's like, bro. Oh, like, I hate that. I it's, hate that. It's, it's, it, it's a culture thing. I guess it, it got exacerbated by COVID. Yeah. You know, brain worms, I think. It's just, <laughs> it's just like contagious. Um, I, I definitely think there is something positive about having to do stuff in a social setting. So if you're in a competitive environment, um, let's say you're doing sports in school or, you know, extracurricular sports or whatever, yeah. just being in, in the competition in general and playing in a team setting and getting yelled at by, you know, spectators or your coach or other teammates, like all of this stuff kind of helps and just, you know, learning how to bond with your teammates. All of these things are going to be helping people. Um, just in general socializing as well is going to help people when they get to a team because all a team is is a bunch of life skills coming together so that, you know, five people or, you know, plus coach or whatever can coexist. Yeah. And I think that is missing, especially when, you know, people start playing full time from the age of 14 so that when they're like 16, 17, 18, they can get on a, a team whenever the event or the tournament organizer says like, oh, yeah, the minimum age to play here is 16. It's like, OK, I'm going to play like 18 hours a day while I'm 14 and 15. So when I turn 16, I can make you know, 300 grand a year playing yeah. Counter Strike. But you never and think about that when you're 14 or 15, though, do you? Um, I d maybe you well, do now. Well, we don't know. I we're fucking boomers. Yeah. 
We don't know that. Shit, I wonder. We do. Yeah, I started competing when I was 18, so I'm, I, I don't know. Like, I, yeah. it's another one And it was never, it never wasn't really an option that existed. It, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, if yeah. you were the best in the world at the yeah. time. You paid rent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Maybe>. But <laughs> I, I, you had a good month. Yeah. I, I like that you mentioned that because I want to ask you this. I almost, I, we had this argument as well, either on the episode or just on Twitter. I, I was losing my mind over this a couple of years back. So this premise in NA that in order to try to, to be really good and all of this, even if you're a team or something, you need to like be salaried. Like the, the, like the thought process is like salary first and then I show you, yeah. you know, how good I am, which in, in my head, it's like, no, first you just grind to, to become good and, and achieve some results. And when you achieve some results, then someone will pay you because they know what they're paying you for. And people say, oh, rent and all this. How am I supposed to uh, put all the hours in Counter-Strike if I'm not getting paid? Get a roommate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Stay at home. I don't know. Like... Uh, a lot of these kids are fortunate to still be young enough that their parents aren't, you know, kicking them out of their houses yet. And then you can make some surface level amount of income from like FPL or cash caps or other smaller online events. You can still get money here or there where you can sustain yourself a little bit. But I, I like using, I don't know, I could be completely wrong about this, but like I like using this, um, the original SK team with Fallen as like mm -hmm. an example of this. That, you know, when you're just like, you know, everyone's kind of in the same room and like you don't have like the, you can't fail. If you fail, you're, you're kind of fucked, right? You don't have the resources. You don't have any, you don't have the resources to do anything. You don't have the salary. You are hungry. And when you're hungry, you're doing everything to win. You're putting in all the times and then some, you're, you're like everything that you do is towards that goal of winning and getting yourself out of that situation. But once you're out of that situation, what that same motivation is is gone. You need to find a different motivation. So I think that's the same thing when in, in North America, you'll have people that are specifically trying just to get into FPL. It's like FPL is their end goal. Sure. It's like, okay, what, what then? Like you get into FPL, okay, you're in FPL now, now what? So I think people in the same token as like, oh, I just need salary for us to do this or that. It's like, no, no, no. Like once you get that salary, what are, what are you going to do? Take your foot off the gas? Like that's it? No, you, got, you should be doing this to get to like a level it's like when you punch a person or something you, you <laughs> don't go, go and yeah. stop right here you're looking to go all the way through yeah. so you have to like follow Fo through. you have to follow through you have to follow through so it's the same thing with like being on a team you got to follow through with it you, you're not playing just to get the salary you're you're playing to win and then you're getting the salary you're getting the sponsorships you're getting you know these side deals all as like a result of that and then you need to stay hungry because if you if your goal is to win the only time you're going to lose that motivation is when you stop winning, which happens, but then you start losing and you're like, fuck, now I need to start winning again. So it's well, a better I mean, motivator. Well, I mean, like what changes that perception though in, in the current crop of like NA players? Like what, what, I guess, I guess the next argument would be, it's hard, dude, because it is cultural, right? It's, like it is, yeah, like well, just stats, you know, star player. You could, you could say like, like there's not enough events. Like, the next argument would be like there's not enough events in NA for people to feel like you have to fight for. It. But then of course there's so many qualifiers to all these events. It's like you're playing to win the qualifiers to get to the events. No, I think the problem is with the individual player, right? Okay. The indi like Steel said, uh, the individual player is his motivations are wrong, and one of the reasons for that as well, to some extent, is and why there's teams from Brazil like in the whole Fallen and that team story or there's so many CIS teams at the top and CIS players because it is you know more cozy in, in NA you know the standard of living is way higher and that paycheck and all of that sure it's great but you know if you committed full time to something else let's say being a doctor okay maybe that's <laughs> a lot of years but I don't know a, a lawyer like a top Top of the line, you know. Like eight uh, years of school. Yeah, even less. Yeah. It could be four or five years of school, like something in business, mm -hmm. whatever, finance, wh whatever it is. You know, that would be a substantial amount of money. If you did that in Brazil or in Russia, Ukraine, like uh, anywhere in Eastern Europe, like you would be okay. But you're making more in CS if you're, yeah. at, the, if you're at the top, right? And I think also just in general, the the hardships of, of, of living conditions and everything, just kind of getting to escape that and seeing like that yeah. you can do that through games i think that's the extra motivator for people to you know for them that's the motivation let's say not necessarily i'm not saying that it's only like money and earning money but through competing being able to do that and then you're willing to do whatever it 
takes to get to that level and listen to the person who's there telling you, hey, you need to practice like this. You need to put the hours in this way. I'm not saying that. Listen, Brazilians are not the epitome of professionalism. I'll tell you that <laughs> first I love Brazil. I don't know what you're talking right? about. As, <laughs> as, as time evolves, you know, they've gotten better at it. But I think it's just about that sort of leaving the individualistic part for the team, you know, and understanding you're not going to be able to do it alone. Yeah, I, I have like two points to that. So one is about, I lost my thought. There it is. <laughs> yeah. There's, there and two? It is. <laughs> Better it's, now it's, than it's tomorrow. Not, it's not the only, yeah, that's <laughs> true, that's true. Hey, I only have the one game tomorrow though, so I'll be okay. Um, so when it comes to the individualistic stuff, uh, first of all, so working with like younger players when I was working on, you know, Ghost, Chaos, or even in, uh, hun in uh, not 100 Thieves, in, in Valorant, there, you can say things like, oh, you need to work harder or, or whatever, but a lot of the young players don't really know how to work hard. You say like work hard and they think they are, they think they're taking notes, they think they're VOD reviewing, but they just don't know how to do it at a high level. So, you know, something that we could do where we load up a demo and kind of, you know, parse through it pretty quickly, we can squeeze out a lot of information yeah. in one hour. But for them, in one hour, they might get nothing. I remember doing some, like, asking someone to review either their own game or, like, one of our team games or something like that, and I looked at their notes, and it was, like, literally, like, a few words for every round. And then I, would, I went back, and I did the same game, and I wrote out, like, I could write multiple sentences for every round. Like, okay, when this happens, then, like, we should be doing this because blah, blah, blah. And, you know, there's so much more that we can squeeze out of it. And I think a lot of the younger players don't really have the guidance there from, you know, more experienced players of, like, hey, this is how you can do this more efficiently or this is how you can just extract more out of whatever. It's also one of those like generational gaps that disappear like from 1.6 to source. Yeah. And then obviously the COVID gap of everyone going to Valorant is like anyone who has the experience to be able to help improve in that. It's like the, the slate gets wiped clean. No one's yeah. there to pass on that knowledge. Snapped. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the second point was about the, it's, it's I think about statistics, like all the new players, they don't want to be the IGL. They don't want to be like the support players, like the Zipixes or whatever. They don't want to be the glue of the team that like, make everything come together and work. They want to be the star. They want to be the ones with the top stats. They want to be the one that everyone looks at. They want to have all eyes on them and, you know, and part of that's a cultural thing because it's all about like the individual. But what they do is they do this at the expense of the team, not, you know, in support of it. Like when you look at a player like Zywoo, for example, you know, he's got insane stats, but he's not got ins insane stats because he's playing, t you know, selfishly to, you know, at the expense of his team. He's just like people show up on his screen and he kills them and he's in the right position. And, you know, sometimes he goes first and sometimes he doesn't, but he's not doing something intentionally to like, uh, we're going here. You're going first, buddy. Yeah, I'm yeah. trading you. Like, there's so I many. Go, I clipped the wall. Shit, I'm third now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oops. Like, I got flashed. It's like so old W. Like, you know, like don't jump to the side because you got flashed. They're also blind. Trust that my flash is blind to this person. And hold W because if you don't, and then I end up as the first guy in, and the enemy's not blind by then, we've just lost every advantage. Now I die. I'm zero and one on the round. Cool. You got the trade. We lost the round. We're back in fucking ECL now yeah you know so it, it I think the, the the culture promotes the individualistic playing for stats because they think the stats is going to get them the teams or the stats is going to get them all the looks and the views but it, it's really not I also talked to we did the scene game thing uh, today with different players and I had Glaive in there and we're doing like we're talking about team building you know, new team, and we were reviewing because Ants hasn't played any games yet with this lineup, the Vitality Falcons game, right? With the focus sure. a little bit on the Falcons, and it's the, a core of a different team and two different players, coach, and so on and so on. And talking about some round, and, and he mentioned exactly that. It's like, well, sometimes some players, I can't remember the exact example, but he was saying, you know, players nowadays play a lot more for stats. No, but it was a guy who made a good play, sacrificed himself for his teammate. It worked out. They got the trade. They got the side. They won the round, right? But he said you don't see it like so much because a lot of emphasis is put even in the community, you know, on stats. Like yeah. it's us as analysts or or whoever it is. Like talk. Oh, look at this guy's stats or this guy's stats. And I'm like, you know, that doesn't mean shit. First of all, without the 
eye test in general, no stats, no matter how advanced or how filtered they are for different things, I don't trust them. Like just, you know, uh, you don't trust at, face, TV forms? At, face, at face value. <laughs> and then the second thing is like, you don't, we, we still somehow don't have, at least not in broadcasts, stats that are filtered for like the economy. Like yeah. I don't want to know, you know, if I want to talk someone's, about someone's performance, I don't want to know who got how many kills against USPs or Glocks, mm -hmm. you know, not saying that those rounds don't need to be won as well, sure, but, yeah. you know, a kill at a crucial moment in a gun, ra gun round will or mean more round, than four yeah. anti-echos, right, like uh, against Glocks or against USPs, and, and we can, and, you know, sometimes it's about people being lazy and not paying enough attention to a game and then just sort of like looking at the stat page at the end. I've never the, done that. The advanced, <laughs> the advanced one that. because it's, oh my God, it's so much better. It yeah. shows uh, first kills as well, <laughs> right? Which, you know, a fir first kill can also be in an anti eco round, right? Or it can also be like a, a, a first kill that got immediately traded by two, you know, for yeah. two of your own players, yeah. which isn't really the same. You know, so I, I think in general... Like, there should be more. We have a long way to go in terms of those metrics. Yeah, yeah but not even just like, you know, that's why I always say, like, just watch at the guy, the way he plays. I don't care if he has, like, 10 kills each game or, like, 8 to 10 kills each game, but he's in, in a specific role and doing the dirty work, and he's doing that really well. Like, that guy's a good player, you know? Like, you, you can't be, not every player is in a position to get a lot of frags. It's yeah. as, as simple as it, that. It's like if you... So there's like two examples. Uh, the one is like train inner, the CT is like jiggling lower, and then like you, you go and peek them and you just instantly pop their head off. Like the CTs would instantly save, right? So that one kill, you know, you don't even have to kill the other four. They, they just say, okay, screw it. So I would argue with some teammates, like kills are a means to an end. They're not the end themselves. And then that extends to like, let's say you get a two kill entry on T side or something, and then it's like a big swing round. The enemy has to do like some force buy, and then they have to eco after that. And then on the force buy, you get no kills, and then your teammate, like they run like into your teammate and they just get like a free 4K or something. And then the next round, like they're on full eco, and then you have someone running around with a MAC-10, you know, gets three, yeah. and then someone else gets two. It's like your two kills, like maybe you even ended up like two and two after you died first on the next two rounds, but your teammates just got like, you know, four kills each or something like you that. Generated and, you, but you generated eight kills for yeah, them. You, you generated those for them, but you, like, you're out at the bottom of the scoreboard still. But your <laughs> kills had more impact, right? There's just no way, there's no way to, like, actually measure that without having, like, the fucking baseball score. Like, <laughs> yeah, just some true. old dude in the fucking stands taking, like, handwritten <laughs> notes. <laughs> like, unforced error here. This guy enabled five kills. I mean, we can't even do that because when you're watching the game, you don't see everyone's POV. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know... At best, you see the action, but we don't even get to see that 100% of the time. At least you have replays in Counter-Strike. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is actually pretty, pretty fucking crazy that they still don't have replays over there. So I think, yeah, that's why people, for example, when they talk about Hooksy, it's the, the big one they criticize. I mean, there's a lot of players in that position that, that you can criticize, but I, I'm always just like, man, like... I just look, first of all, I look, what, how do they play their T-side, mm -hmm. right? Like, because that's his main job, to organize their T-sides, right? And, and, and put those players in some good positions and everything. And sure, there are th things to criticize from time to time. Probably, like, uh, the pace sometimes in, in, in defaults, uh, the mid-round a little bit too slow to organize the ending of the round and, and whatnot. But in general, it's good counter-strike that they're playing his individual performance, like when you look at the T side and some of the sacrifices, all the guns being dropped, everything like that, I think still doing a, a good enough job where he's a net positive for that team, mm -hmm. right? Like, and yeah, in the end, I feel like CT side, I think the problem is like what teams should start doing more is don't put your weakest player, you know, on B side Mirage. Put him like Cat or put him somewhere where he can move and rotate and kind of <laughs> use his game sense to sort of either bait for a teammate or just sort of hit good timing to push through a smoke. That's kind of Kerrigan style mm -hmm. to some extent, you know, Apex a little bit. I think that's better because we see more and more T-side anchors, like lurkers, like the strong ones just going for those like 1v1 fights and, and you know, they're objectively stronger. That kind of concept though shifts with the meta though, doesn't it? Like 
having having a stronger player as like your B anchor mm -hmm. has shifted when more people start attacking the B bomb. So you don't think like a meta shift like remember we used to like fight for mid a lot more. So you want yeah. your star players, window, catwalk, con. And when you shift away from always, because we have so much refined utility, if we're just using Mirage as the example, so much refined utility, those mid fights don't really happen unless CTs are like actually pushing. So you don't need to have your star players in those spots anymore. Um, I'll, I'll have to use some Valorant, um, you know, references. Oh, perfect. We love <laughs> because, that on this podcast, yeah. <laughs> because that's just what I was uh, involved with for the last few years. And I w it was so hard when I'd have to build a new team or I was just like selecting players or, you know, just telling management, oh yeah, I prefer this guy over that guy for what X and Y reason. It was that you'd have like three pivotal roles that you needed people to have their own like brain and mind that could do their own thing. And that would be vocal. That would be able to help with the mid round. And that would be the lurker that's like on the other side of the map, yeah. usually like a sentinel player. That would be um, the main duelist because they have to kind of like you know, say, I want to go for this pick, I want to go for that play, I'm going to do this thing, like, set me up for it. And then, like, obviously the IGL, but then you would either have, like, a controller or a, uh, an in initiator. The controller in the game is someone that throws, like, smokes, and the initiator is the one that kind of gets info, like, uh, active info. So they use, like, drones and dogs and stuff like that to find out where the enemies cool. are. And so it was like so hard to balance. It was so hard to balance. Like, who do you want? To Release have? the hounds. It's like who do you want to have? Like in Counter Strike, you could have these like brain off kind of fraggers that you just send somewhere and go fight. But then you would need to figure out, okay, what spots do I want to have people play in? And it's like when I'm playing Nuke, and you have this player playing main, like the outside rifler guy, uh, as a counter terrorist. Like, the IGL is not telling this person where to go. So if it's someone that has really good aim, then yeah, they can win their outside duels and they can do, like, a couple things really well. But if they don't know how to tell people where to rotate, hey, I'm playing big garage this round. You rotate down vents if I call that the, these smokes happen. And kind of, like, helping uh, orchestrate the round. Or Mirage, the con player. Hey, they're taking mid. Leave A or leave B. Let's fight mid together. Or hey, give them mid now. Let's walk into A ramp together. You need someone that knows like when am I going to play mid this round versus when am I going to stack two A because I think it's going to be an A pop. So yeah. having someone that's not necessarily the IGL, but someone who's cerebral enough that can do that, and that's where someone that know, thinks about the big picture in their game. Exactly. So that's where like secondary IGLs come in, especially in to play on CT sides because if I'm the B player on Inferno yeah. because everyone hates playing B, I can't orchestrate what's happening at A site. So I need someone on A site that has a brain and a mouth. Ex exactly. <laughs> that they could say, "Yo, don't always up, get both. Give up arch now. Like we fought mid, okay, let's go into a hall setup now." hey, let's fall back into a pit setup. Look, we use all of our smokes, but they use like four mollies at B already and three smokes to take mid control. So we can back up into this pit site crossfire now. And the, um, that's where you need to have these types of vocal players. Someone who can quarterback yeah. the situation. And, and then on top of that, you have the actual part of, well, players on one side have to pay attention to what the players on the other side are doing, right? Which is, let's say you send a third guy B in the mid round because you want to retake top banana, that's when... <laughs> the A guy should push. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, that's that's when how you, it works in that, A, baby. As they're, as they're flashing, you know, top banana, that's when you dr drop a smoke in apps, right? Because uh, that's the timing for them to, to react. get information. And also, you know, you had teams like Fnatic, back in the day, who as soon as they hear that flash in the mid-round, they would just group 5A immediately mm -hmm. because they're counting on, yeah. usually it's three guys doing that, or if they hear the top uh, wall smoke, the molly retake car, nades, yeah. like the retake nades, right? They would just do it immediately. So that's the timing for you to smoke because a couple of things will happen. Either they will try to speed up like that and they will you will have a smoke to help you either focus on just lane or if they're coming through apps, you'll have an advantage there. Or you'll buy enough time for your teammates to get that info for something to happen so you get more info. Or the third th thing, they'll get it and you will get two guys back. Kind of, maybe not exact, but hopefully by the time your smoke starts clearing so that then you're, you have the manpower on the site in, in exchange for that utility. And, you know, it, it took a while for to get teams to sort of understand this and yeah. get players to, to think about it that way. For example... 
when I was doing the demo review as well today with Yabi and we were watching Mezzi play ramp and you know his first thought when he sees him smoke the molly immediately is like oh they must have thrown smoke's yard mm -hmm. right because otherwise he wouldn't have smoked the molly so quickly right he would have maybe nailed or whatever right um so it's a it, it's become it's evolved a lot yeah. more when our players you have to pay attention to what's going on on the whole map even when it comes to your utility yeah so here, here's my question, because you obviously have all this this wealth of knowledge. And <laughs> Crack me open, up. baby. <laughs> well, this is what I wanted to get at when I said, are you trying to fix the problem? Is there's there's like two kinds of players, I feel like, when like you're just kind of like casually pugging an FPL or face it or just premiere. I play with Scrawny a lot. Mm. We kind of do a Q and, and share our misery together. But when we play and we get, we get put on a team with idiots or... <laughs> assholes or just people who don't know just what's people going on. So, so when you get on a team, okay. So yeah, people who are, basically, any, any pe game we play. People really. who are in the same skill group as you. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> you fucker. No, but like, when I, when I notice that I have a teammate who is like, either A, like non-compliant, B, doesn't know what's going on, I'm just like, that guy exists. And I'm going to do what I can around him. Scrawny's the one Mature. who like tries to like get this guy back in and he's like mm. Scrawny's and they're like no bro just just chill there just chill there. like do this this x y and z like are you the guy in FPL who's like kind of like <laughs> neither <trying to> marshal <laughs> the team or you're just kind of like fuck it I'm gonna live in this hell I'm gonna deal with it as best as I can and I and I'm gonna see what happens it's funny because when I get like newer twitch viewers that kind of like see me for the first time they'll be like steel like why don't you like call strats or like why don't you tell it to do this <laughs> yeah. it's like well two reasons one like whenever I would formally tell people like hey in the so-and-so position i would always be like well if you were so smart then you wouldn't have gone banned and then it's just like holy fucking shit so it's like it like if people don't Fuckers. want to learn then you can't force feed them yeah. you know so they have to be receptive of it so there's a few people that you know on steam will message me after a game or something like that cool this person's down to know i know that i can give them feedback in a game but a majority of the people they they don't they don't want to know it's like an attack on their ego or something yeah so uh when it comes to me calling strats it's like i could call oh shit i watched like vitality play anubis and they did this thing where they like peaked here and then as soon as they did that they went over to this other spot because they knew that the enemy was going to react that way and i call something similar to what i saw a pro team do but these guys don't even crack demos open. Like they haven't watched these pro games, or if they have, they didn't like understand it to that level. So I can call something as simple as like, let's exec B on Vertigo. And then you're running over the spot. No one said they're doing left side smoke. They, no one said they're doing right side. No one said, I'll do like the close nades to clear the, like the wood construction danger, mm -hmm. whatever. And then I'll like entry in, okay, boost me up here. And as, when you do your first flash, I'll like go up like wood. No one says any of that stuff. You go there, everyone's like standing on each other. Then you start throwing like the smokes and you throw the mollies and you throw the flashes and people start like going in, but then they like stop to jiggle and then they start going in, then they get blind and then they just, try to like jump to the side and it's like <laughs> bro just fucking go <laughs> it's like if you can't do something as simple as like a normal just pop on on whatever site because people can't scale properly or people are afraid to die in a video game or you know people don't know the smoke like oh i don't know left side smoke but they don't say that they just go to the spot to throw the molly and it's like well you don't even have a fucking smoke like <laughs> entry yeah you know and it's just it's impossible because the only way that you resolve that, like if you're on a, a team, you wouldn't, an IGL doesn't say in the game, like, okay, and then you're going to do this smoke, and then this is how you line it up, and then you go, you are going to do this smoke, and then you're going to entry, but you don't go this way, you go that. It's like you don't do that in the yeah. game. You do that in practice time when you talk the theory. Yeah. And in FPL, if people either have a different system, and it's like, well, on our pop, we do this and that thing, but on your pop, you do this other way. So there's already like a conflict a there. A clash, yeah. But then it's like there's people that just haven't ever done like a pop ever. Yeah. You know, they just play games and it's like, oh yeah, like on my team, we just, whoever's got nades just throws in. We just hope for the best. The, the problem is cool. also, <laughs> there's like a fine balance between, first of all, I only play five stacks with my friends. I couldn't, I couldn't begin to fathom. Oh man, I'm, I'm solo <clears throat> and duo queuing in NA and it's, and to it's play a test of patience. Because there you have people who you know don't want to even do the basic amount of trying but here's the thing i also don't try hard really when i play like i want to have fun i'm not playing competitively right but 
of course, I hate to lose. <laughs> He's one of them. No, no, no. <laughs> no, so for guy. me, it's like this. <laughs> it's a here. couple of things. First of all, <laughs> is like when you, what you said, oh, do you organize people and stuff? It's like people don't really want to do that. And mm -hmm. if they can't do properly what you tell them, then it's incredibly frustrating oh, yeah, to even try yeah, to, yeah. to call in a, in a pub. That's why I am right? the way so, that I so, am. I only have so much energy to give in a game of Counter-Strike. Yeah. So, you know, for me, guys. the balance is here. If I have to call is there's no one else who's doing the calling, I do it for, like, the kind of... Someone will just crouch to see who's, like, here. I, I uh, do it for, like, the important rounds. You know, maybe sure. I come up with a pistol, three anti critical swing rounds pistol, game, anti yeah. first gun. If those all go well, fuck it. We might lose the rest. Give us something to play for in the second half. <laughs> you know, and I hate it. I cannot stand. There's never a reason to lose like a 4v2, a 5v3 or anything like that. Yeah, especially in a reset round because then I don't have money and that's fucking not fun. Yeah. I don't want to play with a fucking FAMAS in face it bugs, right? So that's where I get pissed. But, you know, if it's... Whatever, the game, you know, like we're leading, it's 5v5, someone wants to do something like kind of silly and, you know, try a play. Yeah, man, go for it. We're not playing a major qualifier, you know, we're yeah. having fun. So, and for me, it is a lot about, I mean, my friends are idiots, you know, so you're running around, sure. you're always, it's always like a great time. It's, it's funny, so I don't really mind it kind of winning or losing in that sense. If, yeah. we can, if we can get to playing like a decent level and have a decent level of team play and coordination and people are not doing dumb shit, yeah. at that point, you know, we are definitely going to run in someone better in, on face. It's like just, you know, guys who actually like play the game every day and all that stuff and we're going to get whooped. But the, the, the payoff for trying like a lot and, and calling obviously different when you play casually to, yeah. to some people who are like in FPL or, and, and are saying that they want to go pro, I think there it's a lot different. When are you coming back? I know you put out that tweet. I don't want to talk about the tweet. I didn't like the tweet. So but I guess you know, you're, you're mid thirties, <laughs> you're getting on there in years, but you know, like that might, that might damn you in Europe, but in NA, what do you mean a demi in Europe? We can still use you. G2? Hooksy? <laughs> <laughs> I could put up at least 0.9. <laughs> Back to the stats. Um, no, but like, you know, you, you, you kind of mentioned it. Like, you, you kind of had like that, that, that obviously, un unfortunately, in, in CSGO, I mean, your kind of like competitive uh, peak was, was not available to you at the time, but you still probably have it a little bit. I think if I were to play full time where I was doing like the aim training and whatever, like KZ maps to fix yeah. the movement, just general mechanic work. And, um, and then I'd need two things, a team that believed in me and a team that I believed in. And it's very hard to get both where you'll sure. have players that are good enough that I think are, you know, have room to grow. They're not like overly either toxic or just like they have a good enough work ethic. They're not like skipping practice or sleeping in through a match or some weird thing. They're not having like this. Such high They're standards. not just like getting Showing drunk. up hungover. Yeah. yeah, showing up hungover <laughs> and they're just like tired and they can't call in a, in a scrim or something like that. Or people that only talk during matches and never during scrims. It's like... There's there's a lot of <laughs> yeah 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 we all understand like the of archetypes, <laughs> but <laughs> no, you, the, so you, uh, that the, word is banned from this buzzword. podcast. We're not allowed to use that. So like the the amount of players that are like that is just a lot. So I I need to have players that I believe in, that you know obviously if I wasn't banned from majors then you know and and I had the pick of the litter that would be cool. But they would need to believe in me as well, right? Oh. I'm going to play with this guy. He's in his mid thirties. Like, Oh, he failed in Valorant because that's what the narrative is. Even though like I had a pretty successful first year, second year got kind of screwed because the coach did something funny, which is somehow attributed to me because once a cheater, always a cheater, even though literally, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And then like third year actually qualified for challengers in the top seed. People thought we weren't even going to qualify. We did pretty well. We had to do a roster change. Couldn't add anybody. So we didn't have like the best end of the first split or the mid-season face-off. And then I got dropped like in um, the second split. And then they did worse without me. But, you know, Valorant community thing, like, no, they looked better. Even though they lost like literally every match, including relegation. And it's like, are we watching the same <laughs> games right now? So 
You I, are I, just with different sets of eyes, <laughs> <laughs> different, so, yeah, different right. brains. Yeah. So I would need I would need people to believe in me that someone in, in their like <laughs> mid thirties or whatever. Could, Jesus, Jason is very tired. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm on point. Right? I don't know do what you're it. About. And then if, if <laughs> this is me at my peak, <laughs> those stars aligned, then I could see myself doing a mounting a comeback. Could you could competition, you, man? Do you think you could build a team in NA right now with those with those? You have to say the names if you don't want with, to. With with there's a lot of good talent between like. Complexity, liquid, M80, nouns. If you uh, take complexity and liquid off as like untouchable. Between like M80, nouns, wildcard. And just any and randoms boss, that you play FPL yeah, with. There's, there's, a, there's a bunch. Yeah. There's a bunch. I think, I think there's actually a few teams in North America that are good. Obviously, they're, you know, if they go and play against a tier two European team, they'll probably get spanked. But like you can't teach experience. Yeah. And I learned that the hard way with Ghost, right? Like I was more experienced than my teammates, but compared to a lot of the European teams, I wasn't. One thing I'm good at though is I'm, a good, I'm good at adapting and evolving. So when I see myself getting spanked by, you know, we got destroyed by Navi at like 2018, I think it was Belo Horizonte. We had like six different situations where we had a two-man advantage that we lost yeah. because we didn't have good protocols. But I'm just like, when I see something that fails, I need to fix it. So I'm instantly installing protocols of like, okay, when we're in this situation, we have this protocol called this, and we say this word, and now we know like this is how we should be approaching it. And it's, it's like a general idea of how to play, not like a specific micro thing. You're calling and a philosophy instead of a strategy. Exactly. So we'll see GIB. GIB is guaranteed kill, info, or buddy to trade. So if you're in a two-man advantage, you're either killing a guy and going one for one if you die, you're playing for info, so it's like a, a sliver crack with mm -hmm. like a molly out, a jump peak like Inferno half wall, something where you can get the info and then you can run away with your life, or a buddy to trade. So you can have like a crossfire setup, or like you take first contact, they swing on you, something like that where you're not just taking a solo duel that if you die, it's like that's it. Yep. And that instantly like made the team so much better. And one thing that I learned with, with a lot of inexperienced players is that they have, like, you can say things to them. You can say, like, oh, by the way, like, this, that, the other. They will be like, oh, okay, like, I kind of get it, but, like, I kind of don't believe it. Until they go and live it, like, you can say the Tier 2 teams in Europe are going to spank the best teams coming out of North America, barring, like, Complexity, Liquid, maybe, maybe a couple others in there. And they'll be like, yeah, but, like, I'm different. And then <laughs> they go there and they get spanked. They're like, holy shit, these yeah. guys are fucking good. Like, they have, like, this and that, and then I talked to them after the game, after they beat us, and they said, like, oh, when they saw that I did this little, like, flash here, or I made this step, they knew that I was doing this thing, and then they had, like, this play around it. And you don't understand that until you go to a LAN, get Thanks. destroyed, and then you talk to the other team after, and then you get their perspective on things, and you talk to other people and mingle and all that stuff. You're like, holy shit, like, this is, like, I know, like, this much right? This little pinhole. <laughs> and then they just expanded it to that. And like the galaxy is like this, you know, <laughs> and you just don't know shit about shit. Yeah. It's true. Like uh, I, I, the exact thing you described, I experienced it when we first went to our, you know, first international LAN in 2013, where we kind of broke out. It's like, you don't even know how you're losing the game. Like you, yeah. you think you know how you're losing. You don't even know how you're losing. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. know how they're beating you, right? That's yeah. how much you don't know about <laughs> yeah. the game that you don't even know how you're being beaten. Like it's, it's not like you're watching and you don't, you're seeing it, but you're not actually seeing it. You're, yeah. you're seeing something else. So absolutely like through experience and, and just sort of, understanding the game on a higher level you get to do that and then you get and then the fun part is you get to do that to other teams yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right it gets nice and you can yeah. see the confusion sort of in their eyes one once it's being done to them and it's a process of evolving well i got a question for you guys do you guys still have like your ptsd moments of like the bad rounds or bad games that you've lost from like years and years ago where like absolutely holy shit and then I've like had, this round i've had one persistent nightmare from 2004 <laughs> oh, no. i'm not even lying to you i can <laughs> wake up in cold sweats dude, 20 I'm... years it's been haunting <laughs> my man it's jason weird, dude. like some like there's it'll pop up unprompted it'll be like yeah. going to sleep and i think of it and i'm just like mother just like fuck, that one why, time yeah, right? why did i make like why didn't i just trust it or it was like planning this is like back in like one point 
six, one point five, one point six, just planting at the A bomb site, and I thought I heard a footstep, and I didn't. Tr- it was like one of those like you didn't you, trust your inner yeah. monologue of like you heard you, you definitely heard, heard a step. footstep. He's gonna be pushing up ramp on A. Yeah. And I was like, he's not gonna push that. And I didn't get off the bomb plan. He killed me right after it went down, and then we lost the round. And that comes to me when I'm going to sleep sometimes, when I'm on a plane, when I'm driving the car. It just pops in, and I'm just like, motherfuck. <laughs> I'd be on that wall in the <laughs> IEM studio right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. For me, it's probably two things um, because one of them was like DreamHack Bucharest 2013. I think that was the one where it was the infamous Fanatic NIP not shaking, not shaking hands, hands. Yeah. yeah and and we Classic. were we were like it felt decent at the time we were in the group with very games uh romanian team and sk which had like face i think face, delpan twist oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that sort of a team right and we're playing them like in the decider to get to the playoffs and it's mirage it's our best map like we're, we're feeling great about it we, we go outside we create a plan for the first like couple of rounds the gun round like what we're going to do if we win the pistol and convert if we lose the pistol in the, the first gun round everything's ready. we win the pistol we win the two antiques i think like without losing a player or maybe one player in the two rounds so money is great everything we have this default that we're going to do the a split after that everything's great and emmy was like our caller at the time and freeze time he just says let's go be contact behind nico <laughs> and it's a solid strat and 15. like and you know like me and Casal, you don't say anything because it's a it's a live game you know i don't want to argue with him like there there was no timeouts at the mm-hmm. time we're just like what yeah. are we going to do it's like fuck it who knows it might work nico pretty sick <laughs> even <laughs> yeah. at the time so you know of course the the op is there or something and we get shredded right we don't kill a single guy mm-hmm. the round turn the, you know the game goes like south from there it goes from from Bad Bad worse. Yeah, Yeah, and the other one was against Fnatic online. This was to qualify for those EMS raid call. Sure. Like cups that were there, which was also like we were in. um, We're playing Fnatic Mirage again, and we have a good T side. I think like nine six T side, and we switch over to the CT side. We sort of know what they're going to. You know, that's like when you're a shit team you anti strat the hell out of the good team because they don't care about you, right? Yeah. And, and that can give you, especially back in those days, like 2014, 2013, and right? They like, play completely different. <laughs> no, they were doing like... They just run at you and yeah, they could do whatever. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> happened uh, sometimes as well. But this time, like, we were, we were kind of on point and we just sort of, you know, we had a guy spotting window, we had an A stack, uh, and they were going to do the A split, but our guy from window just like over extends for no reason when we already had the advantage mm-hmm. we lose the pistol again the game goes out of control so it's like kind of yeah. these two rounds where i'm like why are people doing we 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 agreed on one thing why can't people just follow the plan actually i just remembered a better nightmare round but this doesn't bother me as much because i kind of <laughs> stopped competing at the time sure. but it i'm not that guy you will understand once i tell the story like i'm not that guy i don't know why i did it I kind of felt idiotic while I was doing it. So we stopped like playing together. I think Nico already went to Mao's or something like that. But there was a tournament in Belgrade for which we sort of gathered the band back together. Um, and I think in the semifinal, we're playing against the Hungarian team, which was like pretty good at the time. Them and the Bulgarians were kind of the two yeah. main teams. And we were playing the decider and we were up 15 four i think as t on or 15 three as t on inferno and i buy a and negev oh no and there's no sell back <laughs> no i buy it <laughs> intentionally okay Jason. all right shit. i buy it on purpose that's why i say like i'm not that guy but and you know we lose that round somehow and we end up it goes into overtime and we lose into in overtime and you're just like I'm the and asshole. i'm just like i it's that's not even the worst part we, we lost like a 5v3 at some point, yeah, even yeah, a yeah. 5v2, I think. I was missing, I was like, started playing like shit. It was so bizarre what happened. Uh, it's but, the, it's yeah. the worst feeling, feeling a big lead slip away. Because like the realization that it's happening kicks in and you're just like, oh, they have oh God, all the dude. momentum, we're on the back foot. And like, it's such a weird thing to like have to like, um, such a weird, weird concept to like have to try and 
explain in a video game because like everything's even like you know like in traditional sports when you say someone has the momentum and like when they have a and they're all like working together like you you don't you feel less tired you know like when you when your team has the momentum you have like more energy but in like a video game like you you still get a sense that another team has all the momentum well it's similar you you also have more energy in cs like you're getting the yeah, adrenaline is pumping you're, you're coming back more. or yeah everyone's focused more like things are and you're starting to hit that flow state but yeah, it's bizarre. Like when you when an enemy is coming back against you as well. Like I had, I think yeah, it was Katowice at 2019, the major. We're playing Navi um, on Inferno, and we have a 10-5 T side yeah. right in the first half, with us losing, being 3-0 down. Flamey aced us in the pistol. <laughs> then we go into the second half. Flamey aces us again in the pistol. He had two aces in two pistol rounds. Flamey. What a god. In 2019. Hey, man, he had a couple of good years. Yeah, I know. But, and then it's like, fine. You know, we had a good CT side. And it's like some of those enchanted games where, yeah, we win the first gun round. But then we lose the, the following round. Right? Yeah. Then we come back and we win a round. We can't string rounds together. And I'm, you know, looking back. I watched the, that game back a couple of times. And it's like, we weren't really, like, making some massive mistake. It's like, if this guy could get just the second kill as well with the first one, we would win. The round. It's like small things. And also them playing really well and that happened to me against navi like a couple of times even on with uh, mibr in the london major in the semi-final there right that was like also mirage and i think the other one was overpass i can't exactly remember but giving you nightmares uh, it's not really nightmares Sweet it's just some of those games like i really i clearly re remember the feeling like even as we're in the game but even after the game, I'm like, how did that really, you know, it seemed like, you know, usually, yeah. usually you, if bad things are happening, you, you can pinpoint them and you can call something or just take a time out, say something to the players. It's like, I didn't feel we were really making mistakes that much. You know, it just, I think it's the Navi play style throughout. It's like this sort of slower style like they're taking control they're like slowly Timing suff suffocating yeah. you and i think at the time you know there wasn't as good of an understanding of it perhaps we didn't have as many and through some of those games you know we we learned and i learned you know because sometimes you're in a 5v4 even in a 5v3 and you know you don't want to give up the advantage you're playing more passive sometimes you'd give up too much yeah, space too much and space. then okay, we're 5v4, but we just let them plant the bomb and we don't have any contain. And <laughs> now we have to do a 5v4 retake with bomb down, which isn't like a great. It's not I guaranteed. Mean, yeah, anyway, it's not, yeah, it's like, all right. So, yeah, you, you learn stuff. The game evolves, but it's it's been fun. Like uh, the, the content I did today, uh, with it, it was actually Yabi. With Yabi, I did. Glaive, you said? Yeah, Yabi, Glaive, Fallen, and uh, Electronic. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got some bangers, right? But it's always interesting to hear, you know, also Fallen talking about the, the Nate breaking the smoke and kind of that extra um, element to the game and how things evolve all the time. Just talking about overpass too, right? Like you see a guy trying to do something on his own towards A on T side and it looks a little bit silly, but it's like, yeah, you just, you kind of have to, you have to play like that. You have to take, take those risks on overpass because everyone is so good nowadays if you always try to do things together and group up they will find your gaps somewhere else and sort yeah. of outmaneuver you you know the average skill level of of players has gone up by so much that it's becoming harder and harder to find those like details you know sure. to where, where you can get better yeah it's 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 i mean it's a, i guess that's it's a weird factor of today's Counter Strike because of because of the change into CS2 is like those those details are still missing. It's like we we we've spent so many years watching pro teams refine and evolve gameplay and strategy and tactics and decision making and protocols, and now it's kind of like you've gone back a few steps where nobody knows what the right protocols and answer is to everything because the game's a little bit different. Like obviously all the pros talk about there's a little bit more of like a peaker's advantage. Aggression is probably more the smarter route to go in, in, in a lot of situations. So it's weird seeing them have to work through those in live because we haven't had to do that in 12, 14 years. Yeah. I think you maybe need to. He's locked out. Yeah. All right. You need to open it for it. But I think one of the 
reasons for that, or or one of the things that uh, <laughs> one of the th yeah one of the things that's important. I feel like it's team building and like picking the players because we were talking about the average skill level of players has risen. Yeah. It's harder and harder to find like uh, advantages and whatnot. You know, everyone's so good nowadays. I was talking to this about electronic, right? Because he really likes vitality and the way they play and is, sure. and is watching. It's like, but that team is almost kind of perfect, like the roster of the team, right? Yeah. I mean, you have the best player in the world. That's a great way to start. You have Spinks, who's grown into this amazing secondary star and is and is finding like he's he is aggressive enough right and taking initiative and finding impact then you have apex the veteran in-game leader who's super experienced experienced has seen it all into a good in-game leader yes and, in and has a pretty you know a clear way of how he wants to approach the game and situations and is very vocal and authoritative and everything like that and then you have flames and mezzi who are like the role players, but their mentality is incredible. Like they will, whatever you tell them, they're going to do. And then Electronic chimed in and they'll do it well. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just like they'll go, like they'll do it with conviction. They'll try to get better at it if it's something they're not naturally yeah. good at. And they're two young, hungry players, right, who are never going to, you know, they're never going to say no to anything or, or really question you. So like the team is built sort of, perfect right in in that sense that you have enough leadership you have enough firepower enough talent and they feel like uh they make a good unit right where there is that good. trust that that you were talking about good players good structure yeah. yeah like when i when i've been watching them um you know i've been playing like a little bit of catch-up obviously i missed like three years of mm. counter-strike and one of the things that have impressed me a lot about vitality is their protocol systems and it's i don't think it's like apex is sitting there like all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm not gonna go try for it. it. I love your in-game leader voice. You change, you change your voice for in-game leader. <laughs> I was leaders. gonna do something French. French. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? Maybe it's not the time. Okay. Um, he's not telling his teammates like it's time to rotate <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> he's not telling them to rotate. It's like they just know. Um, they have like good setups at the start of the round mm -hmm. where they know like okay, here's the first phase. We're gonna do this, and then here's the second phase. But they have good reactions to things hey, the enemy is at this location and that location. Two people at each spot. We're pushing this other location together now. Boom, we took this. Okay, now we're going to the next step. They're never just thinking about the next step. They're thinking about, okay, what are we going to do next? And then after we've done that, what are we doing after that? And a lot of these things, they could be mid-rounded, but I'm pretty sure, because this is the way I would do it, so I'm, I'm assuming that that's how they do it, they have these protocols and... Um, kind of reactions in place where, and then chemistry also helps that. So when you have someone that is aggressive, that, you know, I, I mean, even Apex will like peek and overextend a little bit and die. And then it's like, okay, he's dead. He died at this position. What are we doing now? Boom, instantly. Like I was watching them playing Nuke. Apex tries to cross to Secret and he gets killed from top silo. And then instantly one down vents and the other out heaven and they're all fighting outside together. And the ramp guy comes back. Mezzi comes back from ramp. Flames is peeking from heaven. Sphinx is down the vents and he's coming up secret. They're all fighting together at the same time. It's like, boom, holy shit. That's like so good. They lost the round, but hmm. <laughs> it was right, good cool to see reaction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think also they've shown a lot more discipline and like great composure too. Um, in summer, I think it, if it was the Falcons game, it's the same game where, you know, they're 4v2 as CT or Nuke on a half buy and like one saved gun, right? Mm -hmm. But no one is like, there's a guy jiggle pits, like kind of the, the, the word you use, like, you know, the, they're just guys either playing for info yeah. or he's somewhere baiting for someone, right? And, you know, you, it's easy to get overcome. Oh, it's a 4v2, the time is running down, right? But maybe you're not even paying attention to your teammates' health or the fact that they don't have armor, right? Yeah. Like you're thinking, ah, even if I die here, they're still there, they got it, yeah. right? But you, you, you don't really see that with Vitality. And I think another uh, uh, thing as well is, you know, Heroic sort of led the charge with this constantly reacting, right, on mm -hmm. CT side. And I think it became too much, not just for them, but also for teams who are trying to play that way. And the meta at some point became like, the CTs are always going to do something. So you could literally just take some app control ST and just hold VP and, style, and, yeah. and punish, yeah. right? And that's when VP started sort of finding some success. And I think Vitality has also 
close to finding that sweet spot. Okay, we're going to have reactions because you have to react yeah. to stuff, but it's not always going to be us making a move, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's going to be sort of being like maybe more cheeky or... with our uh, utility, right? Like mm -hmm. holding that smoke a bit longer. Sometimes it's going to be a stack so that your opponents can't really pinpoint and on, oh, okay, we've killed Apex, now you're going to push lobby 100%, right? Or, or, or something as basic as that. What do, you, what do you think? I mean, as you mentioned, you took a little bit of a break in Counter Strike. What do you? What do you? How do you like the changes in CS2? Like, if you if you take out like the extra stuff, like obviously the anti cheats, not quite as, as good. Sure. Sixty four tick bullshit. Like, all let's the, not go all into the that. But, like, if you, yeah. take, if you take into effect, like at the moment, we were just talking about while you were gone. Like, peekers advantage seems to be seems to be huge, and teams yeah. are really players are really dealing with that. Smoke's being blown open. The changes to CS2 overall pretty cool, or I think the direction is pretty cool and pretty good i think like being able to sell weapons in the buy phase like the amount of people that miss bought i think like doing these little like valoranty things to the game is quality of life change yeah it's yeah. just quality of life. it's not really changing the game too much and then like breaking the smokes the volumetric smokes um that's pretty cool the peekers advantage not cool lan cool <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh having tournaments cool um <laughs> there's there's a lot of things that are cool and are on like the right track. Obviously, like there's a few kinks that they have to like iron out or whatever. It's you know growing pains on this you know triple A multi billion dollar company yeah. that they have to figure out their spaghetti code or whatever. There's a few things that do need to get tweaked. Like uh, oh my god, the micro stutters, the performance issues. Sure. Like you know there's things that they haven't nailed. But there's I think a few good things that make the game kind of like spiced up a bit. Um, and like change it enough that it's like a cool change, but it's not detracting from the main core of the simplicity. Or what Counter Strike is. Yeah. I do have a question, and I'd like our viewers to re reply to it in our Discord or wherever. Ooh. And tweet me. And so <laughs> are we <laughs> are we just boomers? Shit. Because I'm thinking like like you said, you know, I'm not supposed to fucking go on google and figure out why my game is not working properly <laughs> right, yeah. right if i'm like i don't need to find these secret like nvidia settings Valorant and, and launch cs's linux and, yeah. and <laughs> launch options and all this shit for my game to run properly right so am i right or is that a boomer way of thinking and nowadays it's the most normal thing like you install a game and you're going to google if something if you're unhappy with something you're going to like google it say oh, okay so i just need to change this little setting or that little setting i out of the box, Valorant works because it's actually like really smooth, and you can, you know, pin that on like it's cartoon and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's like Valorant is Mac OS, and then you're going to CS, and it's like Linux, but like in hard mode, and you have to like be a, like a computer hacker to <laughs> to like get everything, like launch options, console commands, like an aliases auto -exec. now aliases. A Aliases for, for jump aliases throws. To, to, to pull out a flash and to move left and right. It's like, why am I aliasing, yeah. like, strafing? What's, what's happening? Yeah, you're like, like a computer science degree. I, I, I am yeah. not, like, an IT person, you know? I am an yeah. idiot when it comes to that, more or less. Yeah, I, know. I know the stuff related to CS because... Yeah, but apparently not even that anymore. That's so. most CS players as well. They're just computer... I have no idea. Outside I, need to like, I need to, like... I have to bookmark this shit when I see it on Twitter or somewhere so I can go back to it when someone says, oh, yeah, this option is really bad for you. And, yeah, this, this setting is, like, now horrible. And then I'll, I'll, 10 days later, NVIDIA updates their drivers. on. Oh, yeah, you can use this now. It's like, fuck's sake. Who can possibly keep up with this? Not a guy who didn't know to turn off enhanced mouse precision. <laughs> Thank, thank, <laughs> thank God we have some of the people. But how like, am I supposed to know that? Know. Like, I'm I'm playing at my PC at home. Like, it's one thing, and then I sit somewhere else, and I expect it to be the same, right? But it's yeah, yeah. it's not. It's if, not. If if the only thing that you have to deal with is it's like, should I have this on enabled or enabled plus boost? Like, that's <laughs> like a good issue to have. Yeah. yeah. I remember when we were at the Valve offices play testing, they asked us. They were like, so how would you guys feel if we just took the console out of Counter Strike entirely, and everyone in the room just was like. <laughs> just like stressed silence of just like horrible horrible we would feel terrible it'd be <laughs> fine i think if you could like access that stuff in in like the settings game yeah. settings like you can yeah, for the crosshair way, now but there's too many so many there's things that you can configure here. yeah like you can like 
Bob's, t- well, not in CSI. Yeah, 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 careful. Like AMT Bob and like, you but know. But like, like all the HUDs commands like, of where it's all positioned. Yeah, and, and then like net graph, like do I want it into the not bottom anymore. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was, well, that was one of the things that opened my mind when we were down there talking to him because I, I was telling him like it would be great if like in CS2, because we couldn't, we couldn't really do a whole lot at the, at the test, but I was like it'd be great in CS2 if we could kind of like customize like where things are in the HUD of like where you're, you know, the 10 player icons are yeah. on your HUD or like how big, you know, where the radar goes and where all these you don't things go. Like, look like and they were like, the problem with that is if we start letting you move things around the HUD, if we ever want to make changes, then we have to account for every possible layout of the HUD that there is. True, yeah. And that like kind of like opened something in my brain where I was like, that's a problem I never thought of. And all of a sudden, if you have like 10 pieces of a HUD that can all be interchangeable, you have... 10, I don't, uh, let me go back to like fucking 10th grade geometry or 10th grade algebra. <laughs> 10, to the expo- 10 to the exponential, you know, like. Yeah, 10 to yeah 10 something to like that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maths live on stream. Even live on a, well, not live, on a recording still <laughs> doesn't work But you know, out. like all the options and all of a sudden they're like, we have to program, we have to like code this for like, you know, 10 different locations and that just increases. I do have a question about that. Why is it called HLTV live if it's not live? It is live. Well, then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a your question. Did you? But it's not. <laughs> what do you mean? Are we? No, this is not H. What? Oh, this wait, what is this? Talking counter, bro. <laughs> oh, my bad. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I've been out of the scene still. for so long. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so well, perfect. Yeah. That's, I didn't that know what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> I was just asked, do you want to do a podcast? I'm sure. Yeah, no. I, this I don't Jason, you didn't even give him like the, the basic introduction. I just kind of assumed he knew, to be honest with you. Oh, no, I thought we like, were, were that big. We were that popular. We that even in Valorant, he's going to keep up with you, Jason. <laughs> oh, that's and a what? low key burn. You want to yeah. do a podcast? Because isn't like Sponge on both of them? He yeah. is. And then this was his thing, too? Yeah. Yeah. Our I, thing. Our, our thing. thing. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Like, I just. Cosa Nostra. I apologize to the fans. I'll be back stronger. (laughs) (laughs) Been out in a different world these past years. I've been, yeah. yeah, I don't think we have, we do, we have something called Plat Chat out there. It's people that were in. I know Plat Chat's Bren, right? Bren and. Bren, uh, Wyatt, uh, Sideshow, those guys, yeah. Cool. Um, Sweet. Do you confuse their podcast as well? Um, Is that the only one? No, I think it's pretty fitting. Plat Chat. Sure. Bunch of Platts talking. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Platt in the hierarchy? Is that like uh, the, is that like the global elite of Valorant, or is that? It's it's the uh, no. It's there's Radiant, Immortal, Dime, Diamond, Platinum. So okay. it's like the fourth down for whatever. Sure. So Immortal is like the second worst. <laughs> yeah, which is weird. Immortal is like. L- yeah, Radiant, Immortal, Diamond, Platinum. That's what you said. I would have put Immortal at top. Yeah, it's like Immortal that. was the top, but then they put a new rank. They put Radiant in after, I think. Okay. Unless they put Immortal in, a, I don't remember anymore. It's that's good. That's good. You should erase that from your memory. <laughs> did you catch Blast at all? Like, did you watch Liquid at all? Um, this pat. No, I needed to catch up on it. I watched Vitality Falcons on New Convert. I didn't watch the third map. I watched uh, another. Ma- I was supposed to watch this. Um, G2 versus Navi, and then I was supposed to watch Liquid as well. Um, I was going to do that t- tonight, but then I'm doing this instead. So we appreciate give me the rundown. Yeah, I guess you'll have to wake up early tomorrow. Um, I don't know. I was going to load up my what, stream. What's your call time tomorrow? Like 6 p.m. or some shit? Yeah, I think yeah. 7, I think. Do you have enough time in the day to watch a vibe? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to watch tomorrow's match. Hey, you're just tomorrow. talking about like how much you can squeeze out of an hour of That's watching one. Yeah. So you can we'll probably complete gonna, all those games. I'm going to double dip because I, I got OBS on my PC. So I'll load up the stream and I'll I'll watch the games that I you, You've been making watch. some pretty cool uh, analytical content as well. Thank you. Yeah. Has that been fun? It's been interesting. It's been a process. Yeah. It's been new. These are very complex videos. They are time consuming to make. Yeah. Um, there's multiple people involved to get the final product out. And I'm still really new at kind of this whole style. Because yeah. normally I just like load up OBS, click start record, one take, bada bing, bada boom, done. Yeah. Um, or I would do something on stream because someone like prompted me and I went into a rant. I would just clip it and just upload it to YouTube. But this in, is more scripted. This is scripted. In 2024, that shit doesn't fly, right? You can't yeah. do this like longer stuff because the ADHD kids, they'll just zone out after 30 seconds. 
So everything is kind of like you trim all the fat. So it needs to be engaging. There needs to be like memes. You need to do a bunch of other things. There needs to be like a, a story or like a some sort of narrative plot, whatever, um, that you extract out of it. So I'll go, I'll find a game. I'll be like, oh, this is like a theme of the game. So one of the videos was about um, just like how phase and complexity were fighting down like B on, on ancient and running down mid and B and clearing like three quarters of the map instantly or like two thirds. Uh, one of the videos, um, it wasn't my voiceover, but was about just uh, Bet Boom just banging out a site on Mirage because they could just like do it like a million different ways. It's BB uh, team for you Katowice workers. Yeah, my bad. Get into it now. Oh, sorry. Shh. <laughs> we don't um, actually care. Uh, at, uh, at, at the, another one was like phase versus Virtus pro. And it was like, I watched and like every round there was like a huge timing. This one got through this smoke. And That's like, the one I watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's so many timings that happened. Um, I've, I've had one where I've written the script back in December, I even recorded some of the clips and I had the build info at the bottom left of some of the <laughs> clips even. I, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to take this off. So I, I have the build info. So when the video gets released, probably sometime in, I guess, February at this point, it's gonna be like December 21st is when I recorded the clips. So you know that the <laughs> shit was done. Just blur it out. And, and over a month ago. So it was about vitality. It was a vitality phase from a Thunder Pick event where mm -hmm. um, they had really good CT side rotations and then also really bad. And that's where I saw this like example that I used earlier. And then um, I have a Nubis one, again, Vitality, this time uh, against Navi. And I forget which event this was, but it was fairly recent. That one's also, like I've written the script for it, and then I was about to start Virtus Pro and Inferno because they're a really good Inferno team. So by the time I'm, I start with a script, write it out, you know, consult with someone to like trim the fat and you know, make sure that I'm not over explaining myself like I typically do. <laughs> um, then we like, uh, we make the, the notes for the editor, like use this clip, use this thing from this video, blah, 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 send it to them. They edit it, come back, holy shit, no. Um, I was talking about circling this person, not that person, highlight this zone, yeah. zoom in the radar here, blah, blah, blah. They come back maybe a couple times that we have to do these drafts. And then boom, holy shit, we're done, final product. And that whole pipeline process, you know, I could write the script in a day, um, that's a lot of the work. editing process but then the, more, yeah. the editor notes and bouncing it between different people that you know maybe their schedules don't add up or like oh yeah like i'll do this but i have to finish this other thing first and time zones and all this other yep. crap so even though you could produce it in probably like a, a couple of days um between like all the parts involved yeah it, i mean we're sitting at like over a month for the, the newest video to come out and this vertigo one that you said you saw was like Fuck, like November it came out or early December or something. Yep. So it's it's been like, you know, longer than I, I, I wish I could put out like one a week or two a week even, but. You probably could. You have to find some ways to cut it down. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just need to stop being as lazy. But then like also. I feel that every like single day. I'm streaming and like you look now, like now I'm traveling and, you know, yeah. do, doing this event work it's fucking so. stupid things but, <laughs> but but welcome to the lifestyle but i feel like if, if i'm here and i'm watching a game and i'm like holy shit this is a really good game and like i've watched it already i already know like what happened that makes things so much quicker like i already know what to look for i already know which rounds i want to work with that m cuts the process in half like of writing the script instead of like eight hours it's four or instead of four hours it's two so i could you know go a lot quicker maybe yeah, I, that, I mean, that stuff's hard, especially analytical content with, like, the detail that you generally want to go into, especially with you and the detail you like to go into with things is, like... The autistic devil. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I do that. I say that in so many words, but yeah. yeah. I don't remember exactly what you tweeted, but did would you coach a team? I, I don't think so, because I feel like, and I could be wrong, you can tell me maybe, coaching is more stress than playing and less pay. You're sorry, more hours. Yes. More hours and less pay. Well, pay depends. If you if pay you depends. have if you if like you're a coach and like you get cut in for like the sticker revenue and you get cut in for prize money and you get like around the same pay as the, some of the players, then I, I could consider it. Um, but if it's like you have your star players all making anywhere between like twenty and like forty k a month and you're on like ten or fifteen or something and then you get like no sticker revenue either. Because the way I look at it is, when I was an IGL, 
Um, I would be there, you know, doing my own aim routine stuff. I would be doing all the scrims. I'd be doing all the prep for myself. I would do review for myself. But then I'd also have to do prep for the team stuff and, and then review potentially for the review for team stuff, potentially one-on-one -on -one with some players, depending on the team that I was on. And then potentially, like, if there's an issue in the team, also talking to a coach or a manager to resolve issues in the team. And sometimes <laughs> those calls are, like, between one and three hours, like, okay, so, like, we have this issue, and now we need to fix, figure out a resolution for it. And then at the end of the call, like, nothing's been resolved, but then you also have practice the next day, and you still haven't even done any prep stuff, so you have nothing to bring to the team. It's like, fuck. So... As a coach, I feel like it can be very similar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the irony is that, you know, when you, especially when you're on teams like Chaos and Ghost, and as you just mentioned what your schedule is like as an in-game leader, yeah. you're probably already doing the job of a coach. And, you know? and some, some teams I was fortunate enough not to, like on Chaos, I feel like, especially with the, the last iteration of the roster where we had MC as coach, where we had like Vanity as a player, and then the other guys as player, like Zappa Leaf, all those guys, I feel like that was very easy for me as an IGL because I felt like I was barely IGLing. I felt like I didn't need to. The players all had like, they had voices, they were vocal about what they wanted to do, they had suggestions, they brought ideas to the table. It was a lot of just like, whew, holy shit, like I can actually like breathe right now. But then on other teams where I might not have, you know, a, a strategical coach or the coach and I like have very different ideas of how the team should play or structure a system or whatever. I keep touching this. <laughs> um, that's when, and then you start clashing with them. And then now it's like, I'm fighting to get my voice heard as the in-game leader. And now we're wasting time getting me just to get you guys to try this thing. And now we've wasted four hours on just trying this. And now you half-ass it because you don't think it's going to work. <laughs> and then it doesn't work because we half-ass it. So you say, well, it, see, it didn't work. So let's scrap it and do something else. And we do something that doesn't fit like my style or system. God, that resonates. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now we're doing something that's not my style or system. And it's like, well, fuck. Like, now you want me to bring ideas for a system that's not even mine. Like, I, I'm, I'm like, fuck. Like, what do I do? That's that's why like Yank always talks about it, and as a coach, you know I know as well. That's why like the the in-game leader coach relationship is so important. Yeah. So I guess you'd have to just find a team where you're in-game leader and you work well together. Yeah. Which yep. again is not easy. Yep. Well, I mean, you open it if complexity came tomorrow. And they said they're getting rid of James and TC. I mean that ain't gonna happen. But let's just say hypothetically speaking. Do I get a cut of the sticker revenue even though I can't go to majors? <laughs> Did you get a cut of the sticker revenue in phase? Yeah. Yeah. I had it in my contract with Liquid as well. Holy shit. I had equal like wow. prize money and yeah. times have changed. Like the team stuff. Yeah. Um <laughs> now with my amazing analyst gig work. <laughs> <laughs> and also, unfortunately, when I was I got, coaching, I those numbers great. weren't what they are yeah, yeah. today. Was it the know, 120 million dollar Paris? Was, major? I think for one of the majors, like where we made semi-final or something, it was like 8K. Each? No, not that. Yeah. Something like that, so... Yeah, better know. than zero. Sure, yes, yeah. Jason. Also less than yeah. millions class, and millions of dollars. Class full kind of guy. You can look at it two ways. Jacob. Exactly. I'm always the optimist. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'd have to weigh it. I feel, like, I feel like this type of like analyst on broadcast gig stuff is more fun because it's less stressful uh, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah, right yeah. Like, I the way it, it's, it's, it's kind of it like this yeah. right coaching is worth it first of all if you're like in a team where you can actually do if you can actually make coach impact. yeah make an impact and you know and if you are winning tournaments here and there right like stickers and stuff like that's where the difference in pay sort of sure, comes yeah. in right but if you're not finding that success and let's say you could do most of the events in the calendar uh, as an analyst, then I think it's definitely more worth it because the, the stress is... The stress, the stress. is the key. Like e immense. And I think also, you know, for you it would be a lot. For us it was a lot because we were also fig public figures in oh, a okay, sense, okay. right? Like, like you, you get a lot more spotlight Years on you. Like for example, a good right example here. right now is, you know, Bleed with Kassad yeah. compared to example TSM, which is a much bigger org. Mm -hmm. You know, has probably some bigger names but on their team, nobody gives a or maybe shit no one gives either. a flying fuck about TSM yeah. and what they're doing, and that's mostly because of well, Kasad still being vocal, but also he was vocal before, and other people and all that. Stuff. But even if you're not doing that, just 
even if he was super quiet and just doing his job, right? Like there would still be a lot of spotlight on that because of, yeah. you know, he's a bigger name or he was very vocal while he was uh, an analyst. And, you know, yeah. that's sometimes unfair for certain people or more likely it's unfair that some other guys aren't getting any criticism, right? Yeah, who, who've like, been around for ages. Some the, of them are maybe even getting promoted, but the Henry G's just it, cloud nine thing. And then like the first complexity juggernaut thing. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. It was it was Falcons it was a unique now, perspective. Maybe. Yeah, for sure. Um, coming from like an already public lifestyle. Talk about the tournament. Yeah, I was going to say Katowice, wait, baby. What tournament? You got your ah <laughs> uh, Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. Welcome to Blast Spring Group, Steel. Thank you. Is it um, live? <laughs> is it live? Is this live? Um, yeah. Act one. Well, the play let's, just, let's just go through some of the opening round, like the interesting ones, really. Maybe I could audition for Blast here right now. Uh, yeah, here we go. Um, I mean, Cloud9 Rebels, don't need to talk about that. Eternal Fire, Bet Boom. That's going to be fun. That's going to be a fun game, game yeah. yeah. Eternal Fire has been on the way up, kind of. Managed to it's, get it's through the RMR pretty straightforward. I think they like were in Zantera's the... Zantera's peak in this game. Yeah. Um, Vicadia. <laughs> right. But Zantera's they're playing the against Bet Boom, right. which is also... Like, I feel like this is one of those games that is not going to be like necessarily... Well, perfect CS, but it's going to be explosive CS. I think yeah. it's going to be fun to watch. I just feel like Eternal Fire is always like kind of, I know they just played in, in some of the qualifiers and everything, but I, I feel like they just have so many tournaments in between them that it's always hard to get like a good feeling or a good read going into any event that they're in. No, they, f they finished the year on a strong note um, last year, so I feel like they haven't changed anything. They Who you got? Now, God damn it. Get that <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who you got? It's, I don't know. I'll go with Eternal Fire. Sure. What's what's Bed Boom's perma ban? Just tell me that real quick. If Not it's Mirage. Oh, actually, it's <laughs> the best one, so it doesn't matter. I was going to say, like, if Eternal Fire can get Vertigo in there, then it's all right. But it's the best one, so it's going to be, as Steel said, probably 50 50. Heroic Astralis. That game's a banger. I like I that. Think a lot. Is, I think Astralis I, is going to shit is, on them. They will. Yeah, it's on the way up. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy about that. I think this, hero I think her this heroic roster is gross. I forget who I was talking to. I th it might have been like Squanders. Uh, we were out for dinner a couple of nights ago, and they're like, um, did you do your fantasy team? I'm like, what fantasy team? <laughs> so I, I made a fantasy team um, the first time, and then like I just like picked like what, what players I thought would go the furthest, and then I realized, like, assign role, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Anyways, I feel like Astralis and Big are going to do pretty well, and like Virtus Pro here. Are, are going to go the distance. Okay. Those are my predictions. You got confidence like in big. Them. I got confidence in big. I, I like what I see. I, I think Ence is going to beat him. I feel like they don't do well in the endurance, but um, they have like a they have a good start. I just feel like the inexperience gets them in the endurance race. Sure. It's so end. wild, man. Like they fuck up the RMR. Like they get uh, the, out of 16, no, out of 32 teams, we had 20 go through 21 22 Something teams like that, yeah. went through and big were one of the like 10 that that didn't, didn't. get to the rmr which is so s weird um I, I feel like for them and then they go to blast and they're like kind of shit the bed in the first game first two games they're gonna and, be fighting against mentality and well, then they imagine. sort of yeah. pick it up and almost qualify for the spring finals almost beat astralis in that yeah. decider game so i don't know what to think um about them but i don't really have any faith in so this end roster so um, well, apparently. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm, like, one of the only ones who, like, thinks this Ents team could be kind of cool. I don't, I don't necessarily know with how Glaive cool. The odd man Bro, out. but this is, again, like, this, this, you, were, you were gone for a while, right? So tell me ago. if someone tells, if some, you come back and you're like, wait, Glay was available for, like, a full <laughs> year. And everyone, like, it, no one wanted him. And then when he got picked up, everyone's saying his <laughs> <Everyone> shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, everyone, no one is, like, believing, like, oh, Glaive, it's like... To me, that's still kind of crazy. I mean, I can see like people are saying, okay, towards the end, the team didn't play well and so on and so forth, maybe a little bit behind the meta. But, I mean, it's a guy who's won four majors. Yeah. You, you know, know like, like surely he he's, was doing something, right? I think there's so many interesting pieces on this team between Glaive, Diha, Hades, uh, Kyler, and Goofy were solid on, on <laughs> <nine. laughs> I, I think it. I think it actually circles back to what we were talking about earlier about, like, the community and, and, like, stats and everything. Like, if the community, first of all, the CS community versus the Valorant community when it comes to reactionary, knee-jerky, results-oriented thinking, 
holy shit, it's so much better. Thank God. Well, that's what happens <laughs> like, when you play 10 matches a year. Like, you have to be reactionary <laughs> to every true. game because 10 games is 10% of your fucking competitive. Yeah, one game know, 10%. Yeah, resume. that's true. But, like, <laughs> it's just like if. <laughs> when fucking we talk jinx. about, like, stats versus eye test, and then we look at, you know, kind of trajectories of teams and everything, it's so hard for, like, people to look in and be like, okay, Glaive, maybe not doing so well at the end of whatever team, but, you know, still won, you know, four majors and, like, two grand slams or whatever. Like, surely there is some merit to something, whether it be experience, structure, system, whatever. He's going to bring something to the table. Why would you not want to at least entertain the idea of like trialing the person and maybe that's just me speaking from personal experience sure. because you I have was sympathy for the slighted, yeah, yeah slighted as an igl so <laughs> I, I gotta stick with my other igls here's another banger furia mongols this is that's a trap game no i, I think furia is really good <laughs> yeah, I, th yeah. I think they're says uh, says by looking me directly <laughs> in the eye. I think with a grin on his especially here. art. He's a new man. Yeah, yeah. Love his outside the box a lot thinking. Of young talent. Yeah, I think you know Mongols knocked them out of Cologne and Katowice last year. So they clearly have an issue with their style. So yeah. mental block. I don't know, man. Furia. I'm not gonna change my mind. <laughs> Like and now, now it's even worse because they said they won Elisa like the one tournament. Like that's for that tournament they switched to art calling, you know. Ooh. And that's actually the first like sort of that's the first land they won yeah. ever since the sort of formation of the roster five years ago. See, that's the first time Serato lifted like a meaningful trophy on stage, which is wild to me. But I think it's just still the dual philosophy with him and Fallen, like it makes That's no such a sense. Weird interaction, isn't it? And you know, I, I don't, I don't think they'll be able to take that next step while he's on the lineup. I'm not gonna change that opinion. Yeah, yeah, and I'm Gary too. I, I, and I think, to be honest, at this point, man, it will probably have to be Fallen too, or maybe for Fallen to move into the coaching role and for them to find someone else because it's. And you know I love him, but it's been so many years in different dysfunctional rosters and teams that now he is. I mean, absolutely past his prime, and we'll see if he can be not be a liability. That's going to be the question now. It's not like if he can be this amazing player, right? Like he has f flashes, maybe. But you get to talk about. It. I gotta bathroom. All right. All right. Psst, fucking what do you do? Puke in his <laughs> mouth. He's just like. No, no, no. It's like a bee stung you or something. See, You're just like, like, Shut up. Did Jason try to fart and he shat himself? <laughs> Maybe. I, there's a brown spot on his jeans I there. Oh man, that that was fucking weird. We'll have to pull that in report. But yeah, I don't know. So Furia, you never know with them, man. Um, the Mongols. I think it's funny to me. The Mongols like they finally break out and then they change like a couple of players. And I'm like, oh, okay, now they're gonna be shit. And then they're good again. Like <laughs> apparently Mongolia has. Great talent, so we'll see. After that is the big one. It's Spirit Apex with the, all the dunk hype. The, the dunk. Did you watch any of the games? Like, no, I, he played? I, like I said, I need, to, I need to catch up on a few. No, man, just um, like casual. I mean, like analyze it. Just sort of like you're scrolling and you see a stream and you see Spirit. Oh, yeah. oh there's I mean, this kid, Dunk. Oh, this guy is 1.37 rating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's doing something, right? Um, is he able to do that on, on LAN? Is he able to reap? recreate that against the top teams, the very best. Um, there's definitely questions. We'll see. And Apex is one of those teams that's just like kind of, I have nothing to say to them, man. It's like not really, an, not an interesting <laughs> team at all. Happy that you're here. Yeah, <laughs> it's like great. You have no expectations, but then they sometimes exceed them, but only by a little bit. Yeah. Like, and yeah, I don't know. Stick was back in there. He gave everyone insight into how much a pro <laughs> player earns. So I guess everyone <laughs> hates his guts now. Um, oh, is that is that how we're supposed to feel now? I don't know. I have no idea. I guess like players probably. I think a lot of people don't know how much it is, right? Yeah. Like, so maybe some players don't like it that now it's. I, I, have I no feel idea. like his video was very well recept, uh, received by the community in general. Yeah. Just like being transparent. Oh, thank you for telling. Me, even though you didn't say exactly how much you made from the sticker money, yeah. or whatever. I, I feel like it was. From a community standpoint, it was well received, but maybe from a player standpoint, they're just like, "No, I have to hide like how much I, I earn because now that you're you're gonna have a different image of me potentially." Yeah, 
Well, then your boys from well, your boys, but the NA boys from M80 are up against Gamer Legion. Yeah, standing situation, obviously minus IGL. Yeah. Don't know who if Def's gonna call or if Swisher would. Should be Def, no? I would assume it would be Def because he's IGL before he was the coach, and then you don't want to really put more pressure on you know a player that's supposed to be performing pretty well for them, like probably outside of it's probably Slacks and Swisher doing the best on the team. Malbs maybe. Yeah, I like um, Malbs. Yeah, so like those three would be the players that you expect to perform the best. And then if you're like, oh, okay, um, by the way, you're IGLing now and a potentially even role swapping, um, that could get a little messy. Yeah, last one, Rooster versus VP. I'd be shocked if... If Rooster won a round? If, if VP lost that one, especially with their stuff. I still hate it. I fucking hate it that these games are best of ones. It's like... Yeah, that's true. Man, MR12, like, let's just do best of threes. It doesn't, it can't possibly take all that long. Jason didn't even wash his hands, but that's all right. And he broke something on the way in. So, yeah, I think some of these games we'll see then after, if anything, just the opening round is best of one. After that, it's like to, to get eliminated or to go through, you need to win or lose a, yeah, three. a best of three. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, when we move into the main stage i mean these groups are interesting what i do i went into 2023 i know, you know g2 and vitality are on the same side of the bracket in their group i remember that unlucky for g2 yeah in in really <laughs> unlucky so we have to phase falcons navi complexity are waiting in group a and in group b it's vitality g2 and then monty and mouse at the I lower like side of that bracket, so pretty good matchups, pretty good matches, pretty good. Yikes! Who do you feel like? Uh, do you f like outside of Vitality, which is the obvious choice and pick, I don't know, who can who can threaten them really? VP. Uh, you feel? I think VP is always styles, always or? dangerous, just stylistically. stylistically I think yeah. they're so hard to play against in terms of philosophy and in terms of they're, they're so good at punishing mistakes, mistakes yeah. and it's like it's like a style that almost prompts you to make mistakes well yeah. forces you into mistakes you're just like you get a little curious like yeah, yeah i'm gonna I think just their like timings are so weird oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. like i think they're they might be saving let me go find out if they're saving yeah let me and you also just i mean you have jame on one side and obviously a vp style patient all of that stuff and then the other side is the apex yeah, who just can't sit like, still, probably. You know, I mean, <laughs> obviously he's gonna oh, do whatever it takes God. to win the game, but that's going to be so hard, right? And just like his his inst instinctively, he wants to do something, wants to move, wants to do I this. Think that's an IGL thing too. I probably. was watching. I was watching their uh, a game that they played on uh, on Vertigo recently, and they had a five on three T side, and they just need a group and do something together, and and then Apex just like jiggles up a ramp for info on A site. And gets killed, and like he has one person like a ramp with him, one person a lobby, one person under B, and one person middle. I'm like, bro, like, what are you doing? <laughs> I feel like that's an IGL thing where it's like, you think you need info or you do need info, and no one's passing it. So you're like, fuck, I'm just gonna go just do like this little peek and get info for myself, and then you just get punished. Yeah, Virtus Pro is gonna murder that. <laughs> So I don't know about any of the. I don't have any faith in like that. You know, Monty is now gonna take that next step no, and no, no, no. do something. I don't really think the I same. Just, I don't wonder when. I, I I don't know about Mouse, man. Like, is Mouse gonna minus Rosen plus Berlin? Yeah, I like. Are they going to be now? Are they going to build on what they were doing towards the end of last year, or, or are they going to regress? Jimmy is fucking good. Jimmy's amazing. I love Jimmy, he, but he's got like that play style that I feel like only like, not only, but like pros and former pros and players especially just fucking respect and love. Like he is that, that player who just seems to like Stoic. make good, solid team-based decisions in chaotic moments. Like he's not going to swing mm -hmm. and try and get like a double or triple spray down. He's going to play the game to get that one kill, keep space, keep an opportunity keep away, yeah. for teammates to rotate over. Like he just, he's like one of the, he's like a Crims kind of player. He's like a young Crims almost, it feels like. <laughs> it's funny to make that comparison because like outside of the game, they're probably as yeah. two, on the two opposite <laughs> <Yep>. sides <laughs> really uh, in terms of personalities. But yeah, and then who else is there? Falcons, which 
just I wasn't unimpressed by their it, blast deb in their debu mm -hmm. debut in blast. They looked they looked pretty decent. I feel like when you're a new team, there's like only up from there. They had glimpses of, glimpses of good things. Uh, obviously, like the individual skills there. It's just a matter of putting things together. And it looked like when I watched the few games that I watched, they had really good like two man things that they had going on. But as like a larger team scale thing, I feel like that's when we were missing a few of the things. And also had to play Vitality twice, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Like Unlucky. it's a bit too tall of a task. <laughs> Unlucky. Um, the that early on in the good for Apex, though you gotta fuck his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, they fuck. That was a good tweet. That's, that's that was good a tweet. solid tweet. Mean but, like it's funny. I think the Falcons obstacle, the biggest one they'll have, is what you kind of alluded to when we asked you about when Yanko asked you about coaching. Is mm -hmm. like you need to have that kind of like relationship between the coach and the in-game leader and you now have Zonic who's there's no fucking involved there Jason <laughs> at least not on my team I don't know what the fuck you were doing in Liquid but You're doing some weird shit um but like you have Zonic who's like worked with Glaive worked with Apex and I feel like Snappy is a completely different spectrum of in-game leader you know like yeah okay so I know I had this like long break but like when I was playing Snappy was like the person that people were looking to like oh this guy's like next up but then he wasn't doing well at all yeah. and he was like failing to get any results and now he's like one of the top prospects yeah. what happened he almost went to China <laughs> Did, was he learning he, Chinese? He, he, <laughs> was, he was close to like going with Take someone signing for like an org there with a couple of Europeans right he was on the podcast he was telling us all about it and then he got the call. Um, I can't remember. It was first heroic, and then from heroic to events. Yeah. Um, I feel like from there, and also, you know, finally got a good team and a good coach. They were able to work together, and then they started finding success. He's got like a really unique style of calling that that I feel like uh, is it can be tough to deal with. I think a lot of teams struggle to handle Ents like early on in their kind of rise with mm -hmm. the way he was calling games. And then I think they just got so much confidence that it actually just started the working gel, in its own okay. right, you know? I think the interesting part for me is, is Zonic's experience from Vitality coming into play here in Falcons. Because you remember at the start, Vitality was three Danes, three Frenchies, mm -hmm. you know, and just... Uh, and they, they struggled for a year or even more than a year to sort of figure out how they want to play because, you know, Apex had one style, Zonic and the rest of them had a different one. Uh, they tried to, to sort of mesh it. Or for it, it couldn't be done. And in the end, it was just like on that, doing it Apex's way so he can feel yeah. the freedom and everything like that. So I think that experience is going to help Zonic now with snapping. That doesn't mean they need to do it the exact same way or, or the, that the result has to be, oh, just snappy doing whatever he wants. But sort of I don't think they're going to, he's going to waste much time now trying to figure out that relationship with snappy and how they want to play. I think in the, the, the game we watched today, even with, with Glaive, you know, they were doing so much force buying on the T side. Uh, of nuke, right? Like almost very little utility, and they it's found too. Yeah, like they found those, baby. they found a little bit of success, <laughs> but ultimately, like they didn't have a lot of like good gun rounds, which is, mm -hmm. you know, you feel like that's where probably Zone is going to be. Like, hey, I get it, like you know, yeah, and CS2 and everything of that, but maybe just rein it in just a yeah, a little bit. Get a gun round, play a slow round out, make the enemy earn a win. Yeah. And the complexity, I feel like that was just a flash in the pan, the Sydney thing. Um, I don't know. They went downhill yeah. from there, and I think they're just regressing to the mean. I think I think they can still be solid. I think they're just going to sit at, like I said in the last episode, I think they're just going to sit at a team that like occasionally makes playoff. But I think their big thing is, like I think, they just play like clutch and advantage rounds, at least in the last few events, poorly. I feel like I've mm -hmm. seen them give up so many advantages where where previously they haven't but also i mean their run at sydney and like that that whole like run towards the end of the year and start of cs2 was like i felt like you had floppy fucking activated like if you want to just boil it down to some basics and general concepts like floppy was playing incredibly well jt had incredible games as well then you had Elise as one of the best players in and the first three months of cs2 until and, everyone started playing it as yeah, well and catching up and th that's obviously not going to carry you forever but i think more than anything i think they still they have well for liquid good ideas fucking cutler was one of the best players at the start of valorant dude it's like until you know you have some guys actually starting to play it i don't want to go there i don't want to talk for about good stuff. and shit like 
<laughs> yeah, any, anyone can be like the best friend. People even were questioning, like, oh, is Ivo going to that be was, good? He had like one bad tournament, like the first CS2 tournament. That was the craziest thing at the start of like Valorant, and this is not like any kind of criticism, but just watching like Cutler, Hayes, FNS, Shazam. Hiko. Uh, well, yeah, Hiko as well, but like all those Steel. guys like, oh, at the, shit, top of, the top of Valorant for like the first. Yeah, hey, we won the first tournament. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first big Riot win. <laughs> Yeah, but, that was just a weird, weird time, wasn't it? So who else? Navi. I thought Navi's they were. Cool. I thought they were going to lose out the second time around against G2 at, at Blast because G2. A lot of times it's like self-inflicted injuries, but they actually spanked them even harder. Navi's so kind of a fun maybe right they've now. turned the corner. Yeah, we'll see. Like they, they're all definitely enjoying themselves yeah. more um, what, while your, playing. What's your What's your take, uh, Steel, as an in-game leader, um, from that perspective of a team like like? I mean, Navi simple stepped out of the roster, you know, the best player of all time, or like having your best player step out and yet your results get better. Like what, what can you attribute the Patrick that to? Patrick Ewing theory. Yeah, well, I just well, saw you need, that. I you need that the yet. glue of the team. You need, you need, uh, I don't know, because like... Well, I guess well, it's first like a all, chicken did, and egg concept, right? That's true. That is true. Um, it wasn't just simple that they changed though, right? Didn't they make another change or was it just... Over the course of over the course of things, like first it was what electronic and perfecto yeah. going over to cloud nine, yeah. and then simple. They went international and then simple stepped down later. Was it like was it that there was uh, changes in performance um, already leading up to simple leaving, and then it was a like, okay, we're going up. I now, think or? I think simple has needed a break since twenty twenty early twenty twenty two mid twenty twenty two probably, well, and I think the... things just came to a head when all this upheaval and yeah switching into an international project that's obviously going to take time to scale up, and he probably wasn't in the right space to be patient and to wait and. Well, he was probably work. like burning the candle at both ends for yeah. like three years in a row. Yeah like best player so i mean it it kind of like sucks that you see oh like i was kind of like holding them back and then other people in the community are like oh well they're doing like way better than we would expect without him and uh the thing with teams is that um it's you often find that they're like greater than the sum of the parts and i think that's what made me good on teams was that I wasn't necessarily like a great player or a star player. Like I had my 1.0 rating or whatever the fuck. But you made the people around you better. But yeah, like the the things that I brought Stats to the merchant. table. Yeah, the things that I brought to the table mean, meant that everyone else played better. And because everyone else played better, like everyone's stats get better, and everyone might you know play better or learn better or whatever. And then maybe that's like the similar thing that's happening with with Navi is that uh, like. Yeah, maybe Simple was like the best player, but maybe it was at the expense of this or that. And now these other guys are able to kind of just be better than like the What do you think is more important, a glue guy like that or a star player? I think you need a balance of everything. You need to have a, a star player that you can rely on having very consistent, very high impact, um, but it can't be at the expense of other things. And then you need to have like this glue player that's going to keep everyone in check, make sure that emotions aren't like flying all over the place. They have pretty consistent uh, performances, not great performances, but never bad performances. They'll, they'll like, they'll never be the reason you lose, but they'll sometimes be the reason you win, not uh, like super often, but they sure. keep everything together. And then you need a good like in-game leader that can read kind of the, the room figure out what's going on, like what the other team is doing, figure out adaptations, kind of get people on, you know, the same page and then keep them grounded for the, the whole time. And then you just need, uh, yeah, I mean, those are, I, I think, are the key components. And if you want to extend that to being like the glue also does the dirty work sure. in some instances where they take all the, can I say bitch rolls in 2024? You can say bitch rolls. You can on this podcast, on baby. On this podcast, I <laughs> try not to get canceled here. Uh, yeah, well, like no the, guarantees there. Yeah, like it's just like colloquially known as the bitch rolls. It's like the roles nobody wants to play. If you have someone that's willingly going to dive into that and do this other stuff, holy crap! It's like you found like a diamond in the rough or something. Yeah, yeah. I think last but not least, phase as well, right? It's fucking phase. It's always the same. You know, they open up blast by losing to Gamer Legion two zero. You're like. All right, and then they by beating Liquid, and then, then they beat the Game Region in the rematch. They beat Liquid as well. So not like, you know, super crazy teams, but still beat good teams. Qualified for the yeah. Spring Finals, which was the important thing. 
So I think, yeah, unfortunately, no matter no matter how boring it is, like I think for Vitality, the teams that can challenge them, if they can get to the playoffs, because that's not a guarantee. Yeah. Like with all the wild shit that could be happening, it's probably phase in G2 because of the individuals that they have on their teams that are like experienced when it comes to that phase. Falcons, I think it's too early. Navi or Mouse, if they can take that net next step, but I'm not so confident. Like I would also, I would rather say someone like Astralis, oh, the all the way from say. the play-in, but they also haven't been together for long enough to have as many protocols on as many maps. I don't know. I and don't they played and they beat, but no, they took took a map. No, they beat Vitality. Yeah, they beat Vitality, and then they lost. I, I wasn't gonna say they'll they'll take the trophy or they can contend for the trophy. But I'm just excited to see how far they go. Either way. Right. I think we're gonna get out of here before Steel starts his mukbang stream. Uh, this yeah. is okay because uh, they didn't give me a knife for it, so or a spoon. You can they just have grab those one at the bar from downstairs. The bar, yeah. they, they do. Yeah, I will yeah, go yeah. downstairs to the bar. Or they have uh, mini just... mini spoons in the room as well if you just want to spoon everything. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Josh. <laughs> you thanks, guys. It was it was fun being on the the pod What's the name of this podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> HLTV Live. <laughs> HLTV Live. Talking yeah. counter, baby. <laughs> Talking counter. Okay. Same is that like counterpoints, but like different people? No. Wow, he's alluded to every other kind of podcast. <laughs> yeah, you can series. tell he hasn't been around <laughs> yeah. for a while. <laughs> Fucking platinums.